um, distinguished guests and members of the Africa Initiative, I welcome you all to this ninth meeting of the Africa Initiative. And allow me to, to say good morning to you and good afternoon, depending on where you are logging from. As I welcome the Secretariat to take us through a short presentation on housekeeping issues. We can proceed. Secretariat. Sandra, do you want to explain um, the interpretation features? Uh, yes, sure. So for um, attendees, um, good morning and welcome everyone. Uh, just a quick note on the interpretation function. We have interpretation in English and French for this webinar. Uh, if you wish to select one or the other language, please click on the globe and then select the channel that you wish to listen to. Um, that's it for the interpretation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Secretariat. Allow me now to make um, a few opening remarks as we proceed with this meeting, which we are holding uh, uh, in the backdrop of a global challenge of the COVID-19 pandemic. Dear members and partners and donors of the Africa Initiative, dear members and observers of the Global Forum, distinguished panelists and invitees, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I welcome you all to the ninth meeting of the Africa Initiative, and especially to the high level launch of the report Tax Part Transparency in Africa 2021. As you are aware, tax evasion reduces public revenue and increases the burden to those who pay their taxes. It is a global threat to domestic resource mobilization and to the fairness of the tax system. Increased tax transparency and exchange of information is a global solution which has proven very efficient over the past decade in tackling tax evasion and possibly other illicit financial flows. The Africa Initiative, which I'm honored to chair, was launched in 2014 by the Global Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information for Tax Purposes. Is an African members and some key partners, uh, to, uh, it is used by African members and key partners to unlock the potential of tax transparency and exchange of information for African countries and ensure that they are well equipped to benefit from it. Already, 32 African countries participate in the initiative, which aim at enhancing the use of the improved global tax transparency to tackle tax evasion and collect more, more revenue in Africa. Initially set up for a period of three years, 2015 to 2017, the, the Africa Initiative was renewed for a second phase, 2018 to 2020, in November 2017, and recently for a third phase, 2021-2023, at its eighth meeting held on 29 September, uh, September to 2nd of October, 2020. The Africa Initiative is built around two pillars, the need to raise political attention to support the implementation of the tax transparency and exchange of information standards, and two, the need to address the administrative and technical capacity constraints of tax administrations in the continent. Political support, ladies and gentlemen, is key 
to combating illicit financial flow using tax transparency and exchange of information. The decision makers understanding of the effectiveness of tax transparency in the fight against tax evasion and other illicit flows is fundamental to creating the conditions needed for African countries benefiting from international exchange of information. In addition to ensuring adequate political support, African countries need to establish appropriate infrastructure to implement and benefit from the international exchange of information standards. Members of the Africa Initiative take stock of the progress made on this agenda every year through their annual report, through the annual report, Tax Transparency in Africa, the third edition of which is launched today. Six years after the launch of the Africa Initiative, tremendous progress has been achieved by African countries, including in 2020, despite the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, pandemic. The main findings of the Tax Transparency in Africa 2021 report will soon be presented by Ms. Zaida Manata, the head of Global Forum Secretariat. I would like to share with you one key, one of the key, one of the key figures which illustrates this progress. International exchange of information has enabled African countries to identify over Euro 1.2 billion of additional revenues since 2009. The figure is just the tip of the iceberg as not all African countries properly track the impact of the EOI or exchange of information on revenue collection and not all of them participated in the survey. However, it means a lot to African government in terms of the improvement in schools, healthcare and other social infrastructures. It shows that tax transparency and international exchange of information is a powerful tool to tackle tax evasion and other illicit financial flows and improve the collection of the much needed resources for, African, for Africa's development. This is why African Union Commission and the, tax, uh, and the Africa Tax Administration Forum support the work of the Africa Initiative, including as co-publishers of the Tax Transparency in Africa report. The Africa Initiative is a driver of synergies to support African countries, countries' involvement in the tax transparency and international exchange of information work. In addition to the African Union Commission and ATAP, strong partnerships have been built with nine organizations and donors. The African Development Bank Group, the Exchange and Research Center for, for Leaders of Tax Administrations, the European Union, France, Norway, Switzerland, the United Kingdom, the West African Tax Admission Forum, and the World Bank Group. We would like to thank all the partners and donors to the Africa Initiative for the support in the tax transparency and exchange of information agenda in Africa. The agenda of the ninth meeting of the Africa Initiative starts today with a public session to launch the Tax Transparency in Africa report is promising. Over the coming days, members will discuss the progress and the remaining challenges to address in order to increase Africa countries' participation in the tax transparency standards and, and, and translate the global improvements in this area into additional revenues. I wish you all fruitful discussions in further advancing the fight against tax evasion and other illicit financial flows through enhanced tax transparency and international exchange of information. I wish to end my remarks there and thank you very much. I now wish to invite the, the head of the Global Forum, Secretariat, to be able to make a presentation with Zaida Manata to make a presentation on the Tax Transparency in Africa 2021 report. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, all of you, depending on where you are. Uh, it's uh, my great pleasure to share with you um, the results of, uh, of the survey and that uh, are uh, presented in the Tax Transparency in Africa report. Uh, this uh, report measures the progress made by the 34 African countries that uh, participate in the survey in 2020. And uh, this presentation will highlight the main findings and the key takeaways of the report. Um, as you, you all know, African countries suffer great losses from illicit financial flows. And several reports have pointed out the increasing amount of illicit financial flows from Africa and uh, its negative uh, effect on the continent's development. Uh, publication these studies, uh, they estimate the range of illicit financial flows from Africa between uh, 50 and 80 a mil a billion of dollars annually uh, with an upward trajectory. Some of other relevant figures, such as the 40% of Africa's financial wealth, which is estimated to be offshore, may raise questions, um, knowing that it could correspond to around 17 billion of euros loss of tax revenue. And uh, you can imagine how much, uh, how, how, how beneficial this would be for African countries had uh, this amount been paid. Curbing illicit financial flows from Africa is critical then to ensure uh, the financing of the continent's development. For instance, the scale of illicit financial flows is comparable to half of Africa's sustainable development goals financing gap, which is estimated at around $200 billion of dollars per year. And this gap is probably even bigger today, given the adverse impact of COVID-19 pandemic on African economies. The African Union Commission forecasted that economic growth in Africa will be in the range of uh, minus 2.1 to minus 4.9% uh, in 2020, plunging the continent economy into recession for the first time in 25 years. By, but, uh, we might be asking ourselves, what exactly are illicit financial flows? And they are all cross-border financial transfer which contravene national or international laws, international tax evasion being uh, then an important part of uh, illicit financial flows. And the link between uh, the lack of transparency and illicit financial flows is supported by research and documented literature. Where transparency is uh, shrouded in uncertainty, the rate of illicit financial flows is high. By increasing transparency and exchange of information, countries all around uh, uh, the world and in Africa are deter deterring and uh, fighting tax evasion and other illicit financial flows. Transparency and exchange of information is critical then for achieving uh, the agenda 263, uh, the Africa we want, by contributing to the domestic resource mobilization and responding to legitimate aspiration of African people. These facts and findings have led to the launch of the Africa Initiative, as uh, mentioned by the chair. Um, and uh, um, the issue was evident. Um, while the past decades showed the benefits of implementing tax transparency standards and using administrative cooperation, African countries were not using these tools to the same extent as other developing countries. And the goal was also clear, uh, unlock the potential of tax transparency and exchange of information for Africa by ensuring that African countries are equipped uh, to exploit current uh, improvements in global transparency to better tackle tax evasion. Focusing on Africa enables the identification of a specific approach and the provision of tailored support to address the specific needs and priorities of African countries to grow their capacity in exchange of information. The Africa Initiative has considerably grown over the years and has contributed to build a shared transparency and exchange of information agenda on the continent. Today, 
the Africa Initiative is a strong partnership to, of Global Forum. It's 32 African members and 11 regional and international organization and development parties, including the African Union Commission, the African Tax Administration Forum, and the African Development Bank. In October 2020, an important step has been made. The mandate of the Africa Initiative was renewed for another three years from 2021 to 2023 with a more active involvement of African members in its governance. In this respect, I'm a, I'm a, I would uh, like to highlight that Mr. Giti Buru, uh, Commission General of the Kenya Revenue Authority, and uh, Mr. Edward Kiswetter, Commission General of the South African Revenue Service, were respectively elected as Chair and Vice Chair of the Africa Initiative for this year. And uh, so, um, what is the rationale behind the Africa Initiative? Uh, the first axis is, is to increase the political awareness about the benefits of tax transparency and exchange of information. This is intended to gain the necessary political buy-in and uh, commitment from African decision makers. With the Africa Initiative partners, uh, we have promoted tax transparency through high level events in Africa and meetings with African ministers. We have also worked with African institutions and civil society organizations. And we are glad that 30 African ministers of finance have now joined the Yaoundé Declaration, which calls for advancing the tax transparency agenda in Africa. Political attention and commitment are essential as a foundation of the second strategic axis, which is to develop the capacities in African countries in transparency and exchange of information. Uh, with the Africa Initiative Partners, we are assisting African countries to strengthen their legal framework to ensure the availability and access to information for tax purposes. We are also helping them improve the organization of their tax administration, in particular through the setup of an equipped and a skilled exchange of information unit. And we are also providing training to officials and tax auditors to effectively use the exchange of information instruments to tackle illicit financial flows and eventually increase domestic revenue mobilization. The annual tax transparency in Africa measures the progress made, uh, made in the continent. This uh, report is the third uh, edition of, uh, of this, uh, this uh, uh, survey and uh, to which uh, 34 African jurisdictions have contributed. It includes feedback from five new respondents who did not participate in the last survey, uh, but does not contain feedback from three countries who participated in last year's survey, but did not provide feedback for this year. Uh, let us now delve into the findings of the Tax Transparency in Africa report. Um, further, as an outcome of the increased political awareness about the benefits of tax transparency and exchange of information, which is the first strategic act of the African Initiative, as I said, is the growing number of African countries involved in the international work on tax transparency. And then I would like to highlight that Mali became the 32nd African member of the Global Forum. Um, I also would like to highlight the increased support to the Yaoundé Declaration uh, following the endorsement of the African Union Commission and the Minister of Finance of the Kingdom of Iswatini in 2020, which brought to 30 the number of African countries which have uh, added their way to this call to fight tax evasion and, uh, and other illicit financial flows through tax transparency and exchange of information. We hope that all African countries will join this call. The second uh, strategic axis uh, of uh, the Africa Initiative, which is to develop capacities in African countries in tax transparency and exchange of information, have also, uh, has also produced uh, meaningful outcomes. First, with the assistance of the Africa Initiative partners, African countries are building the infrastructure needed to effectively use exchange of information to tackle tax evasion and other illicit financial flows. The trend is positive across the board as indicated in the, in the figure that you can see. 
in 2020, we saw four uh, more countries um, engaged uh, as compared to 2019, um, delegating the function of competent authority from the Minister of Finance or the head of the tax administration to more operational officers to make uh, exchange of information more efficient. The implementation of units dedicated to exchange of information has increased to 20. Uh, uh, the exchange of information uh, units are instrumental to the management of exchange of information and the use of this tool to domestic uh, resource mobilization. The use of exchange of information manual and uh, the uh, exchange of information tracking system continued with one additional country adopting an exchange of information manual in 2020. These tools are essential to well-functioning exchange of information process. The implementation of a sound exchange of information infrastructure will continue to be an area of focus for the capacity building program of the Africa Initiative Program. The Global Forum and ATAF toolkit on establishing uh, and running functioning uh, exchange of information uh, function released in 2020 contributes to support uh, African members. Since uh, 2014, the level of knowledge on exchange of information has uh, risen sharply. The low level of uh, knowledge affected 78% of countries in 2014, and now only 26% of countries consider their level of knowledge as low. Expertise has progressed well. Um, we have 73% uh, of countries rating their team's level of knowledge in exchange of information as medium or high, which is compared to 23% uh, in 2014. The African Initiative Partners will continue to train uh, African tax officials on exchange of information. Already, all African tax officials can take uh, e-learning course uh, free of charge on key areas of tax transparency. Regional and country specific trainings will continue to be delivered virtually and hopefully uh, in person soon. Other initiatives will also continue to be promoted to help African countries build a culture of exchange of information. One of the objectives of the Africa Initiative is to help African countries sufficiently broaden the exchange of information networks to allow tax auditors and investigators to have access to key information needed to enforce domestic laws. This has taken a positive trend for the 34 African jurisdictions surveyed. Despite the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, 90, uh, 901 new exchange of information relationships were created as at uh, December uh, 2020, mainly through the signing of the Convention on Mutual Administrative Assistance in Tax Matters, known as the MAC, which is the most powerful multilateral instrument for administrative cooperation between tax authorities. Four more African countries signed the MEC in 2020, Botswana, Iswatini, Namibia, and Togo. And three African countries ratified it, bringing it into force. They are Cabo Verde, Kenya, and Namibia. As a broad exchange of information network covering all relevant jurisdictions is critical, support will continue to be provided to African countries seeking to join the MEC. In 2020, uh, another toolkit uh, uh, was released. Uh, it was a toolkit on becoming a member of the MAC. And uh, the, the idea is to help jurisdictions uh, in this uh, process of, uh, of uh, um, broadening their uh, tax treaty network on, uh, on administrative assistance. Tax administrations uh, cannot use their domestic access power to obtain information available in a foreign uh, country. Um, the country's border are a border to information. And so to obtain the relevant information for their audits in the presence of a cross-border element, they should use their exchange of information network to request information from their partners. In the 2014, African countries were not using exchange of information in their tax audits. The imbalance between the number of requests sent in green and uh, the requests uh, received in orange is obvious. 
you can see at the beginning the, the huge gap that uh, appears in, the, in this graphic. And uh, in 2020, uh, while the number of requests received by African countries had always been higher than the number of requests sent, last year, for the first time, African countries turned the tide and became net senders of exchange of information. 460 requests were sent out of, by African countries compared to 439 requests received. We hope uh, uh, this uh, trend that we continue. And, uh, uh, but however, although African countries are steadily sending more requests and became net standard of exchange of information requests, they still lag behind other developing countries, which are generally net standards of exchange of information requests since uh, 2014. What I want to emphasize is that uh, we should celebrate this result, but there are still progress to make in the use of exchange of information by African countries. Usually, uh, a jurisdiction that implements transparency and exchange of information has a goal of ensuring that the initiative uh, um, does result into revenue collected. And uh, this is especially the case for developing countries that suffer great loss from illicit financial flows and mainly through tax evasion. From the survey taken of, uh, of the African jurisdictions, uh, the request sent directly translated into additional revenue in 2020 with eight African countries uh, securing uh, $224 million of dollars around uh, 200 million of euros between 2014 and 2020. These include Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Kenya, Senegal, South Africa, Togo, Tunisia, and Uganda. Since uh, 2029, uh, exchange of information has enabled African countries to identify over 1.2 billion of euros of additional revenues, as highlighted by the chair. Taking into account that only a few African countries are monitoring that uh, the revenue identified uh, following a request, this amount is just an indication of the potential of exchange of information for African countries. Going forward, support will continue to be provided to African countries to track uh, the revenue identified to exchange of information. So we can, uh, we can uh, measure the, uh, the benefits of exchange of information on a more uh, on a solid basis. The revenue raised as a result of exchange of information already highlights that uh, combating cross-border tax evasion and avoidance through exchange of information is uh, one way of raising additional revenues for the post-COVID recovery. Automatic exchange of financial account information. This is a tipping point in the fight against tax evasion. Over 100 jurisdictions are already exchanging every year financial account information on an automatic basis. And this number uh, would reach 115 in 2023. The implementation of uh, automatic exchange of information has been limited at the, at the early stage in Africa, with only Mauritius, Seychelles, and South Africa engaged. The dynamic has changed and more African countries have implemented or are in the process of, uh, of implementing automatic exchange of information. As of uh, December 2020, seven African countries were committed to a specific date and three additional countries were considering an appropriate date to uh, start uh, automatic exchange of information. Since then, Another one, Uganda, recently committed to implement automatic exchange of information in 2023. To support developing countries in the implementation of the automatic exchange of information standards, in particular, in one of its core building blocks, a toolkit on confidentiality and information security management was released in 2020. The Africa Initiative Partners will continue to support African countries willing to implement automatic exchange of information and benefiting from it. The upskilling uh, from the capacity building activities undertaken in the context of the Africa Initiative uh, last year resulted in the following. 
an increase of the technical assistance programs in Africa with uh, 31 African countries benefiting from either an induction program, uh, which is a comprehensive uh, technical assistance program offered to all post-2015 uh, uh, members in a tailored assistance program. In 2020, the African region received 37 of all technical assistance support provided by the Global Forum Secretariat. A significant increase of the trainings with 12 trainings attended by close to 1300 officials. The attendance is more than the one in the whole period of uh, 2015 to 2019. And this was possible because of uh, the adoption of virtual training. In terms of gender balance, more needs to be done in Africa to increase the percentage of women participation in capacity building initiative. While in other regions, uh, the average of uh, is above 50% uh, of female attendance, and for Africa female attendance, it was at a mere 34%. But uh, this low average figure was due to one specific seminar, which exceptionally, um, we had a uh, very low female attendance. But gender parity was achieved for other seminars targeted at African officials with almost 50%, 49.6% of, uh, of female attendance. Two uh, beneficial ownership trainings, one for French speaking countries and another one for English speaking countries, covering close to 300 participants were delivered as well as two country specific beneficial ownership trainings, one for Ghana Ghana and the other one for Uganda were delivered. The Global Forum and its partners will continue to support African countries to address outstanding issues and help them close the gap with other jurisdictions. I, I would uh, like uh, just to uh, highlight here the three new toolkits that uh, were uh, produced in uh, 2020 to assist developing countries in the implementation of core components of the tax transparency agenda. A toolkit for becoming a party to the convention uh, on MAC, the MAC, uh, it helps a jurisdiction set up uh, a sufficiently wide exchange of information network, which is critical, as I said before, for effective exchange of information. It, it outlines the benefits of the MEC um, as a multilateral basis for exchange of information and uh, offers an overview of its main uh, provisions, uh, and, um, its relationship with other uh, treaties and legal instruments, as well as the procedures to join it. The Confidentiality and Information Security Management Toolkit um, aims uh, to enable more developing countries put in place one of the key elements um, for automatic exchange of information and then benefit from it. Uh, the toolkit on establishing and running an effective exchange of information function was released with uh, ATAF and uh, it assists the jurisdiction in establish and uh, or improving the uh, um, exchange of information units operation by providing policy considerations and guiding and guidance on setting up and managing an effective exchange of information function in order to improve cooperation amongst tax administrations to better to better tackle uh, tax evasion. Um, so looking ahead and beyond uh, this year, uh, we can say that the work uh, of this uh, initiative is just beginning and the tax transparency agenda is moving forward in Africa. The biggest challenge now is to continue to support African countries in spite of the COVID pandemic, knowing that tax transparency will be key for the uh, post COVID uh, recovery. With uh, um, our partners, we are developing new ways to deliver assistance as the demand is still there, as well as enhanced political buying. For 2021 and beyond, the main areas of support would be the implementation of the, tax trans of the transparency of beneficial ownership information and automatic exchange of information, which uh, uh, will help uh, African countries raise domestic revenues. To that end, continuous political and high level supports are needed and therefore uh, awareness and engagement will continue as well as training and uh, capacity building. 
in addition, exploring new uh, tax transparency areas through cooperation in the field of tax collection can be highly useful in situations such as when the taxpayer is not present or has not assets in the country tax, uh, of taxation or has uh, um, moved uh, its assets uh, uh, its assets to uh, to another jurisdiction. A technical working group will work to guide and contribute to effective fighting exercise aimed at understanding the current position of African countries in terms of uh, tax collection, collection in general and the conditions to fulfill for effective uh, cross-border assistance in the recovery of tax claims. Uh, this preliminary work uh, will serve further discussions of the Africa Initiative members and future actions in this area. Another area of interest for uh, African countries is the use of exchange of information for non-tax purpose. Um, this, in the coming years, uh, work will be initiated within the Africa Initiative to advance this critical issue for tackling more effective all forms of uh, illicit financial flows. As I conclude, I wish to thank all the partners and donors of the Africa Initiative for their commitment and support to ensure that African countries participate more effectively in and benefit from global tax transparency. I, I'm uh, extremely grateful for uh, all the, this uh, partnership and contribution and support that we have received so far as uh, they have enabled us to advance uh, transparency and exchange of information uh, in the developing world and especially in Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Zaida. Allow me to appreciate the very elaborate and very clear presentation uh, uh, on the Tax Transparency on Africa report. I believe uh, we will engage through, we'll, we, we, are, we are going to interact with that report in the next two days and or th three days or so. So thank you very much, Zaida. I would li like now to introduce the first session, the first panel discussion, which is about making tax transparency a priority for Africa. And I would like to be able to introduce the, the panelists for this session. We have Mr. Albert, Muchanga, Commissioner, Economic and Development, Trade, Industry and Mining, the Africa Union Commission. Our second panelist, Pascal Saitaman, Director of Center for Public uh, for Tax Policy and Administration, the OECD. I will also introduce Ms. Maria Jose Galde, the Chair of the Global Forum. Also introduce Mr. Logan Watt, Executive Secretary of the Africa Tax Administration Forum, and myself, the chairman, will form that panel. Then I would like to introduce our moderator for this session, who is Ms. Elsa Sandrine Sawandogo, who is a journalist, newsroom manager at the Economiste du Faso Burkina Faso, member of the International Consortium of Investigative Journalism, ICIJ. Let me now introduce, uh, ask uh, 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 Ms. Elza Sadrin to pick it up from there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Buru. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Je voudrais remercier I would like, Monsieur first of all, to thank Mr. Peru for his uh, kind introduction. Je rappelle qu'il est le président de l'initiative africaine like et the, uh, commissaire général du Kenyan Legislative Authority. And he's also uh, the uh, commissioner for this. Uh, Je voudrais aussi remercier Mme Zainab Malata. I'd like to thank also Mrs. Zainab Malata. La secrétaire exécutive du Forum Secretary of this uh, sa forum présentation. for this outstanding presentation. Alors, il est clairement établi it à partir de sources présentes aux autorités 
que les flux financiers illicites, illicit y compris l'évasion fiscale, including tax evasion, font partie des principaux obstacles à la mobilisation des ressources in en Afrique. Uh, uh, in Africa. Parmi les études auxquelles on peut se référer, And some of the studies which can be referred to, on peut citer le rapport du groupe de haut niveau the de l'Union africaine de la African Union Union économique des Nations Unies United pour Nations Economic Commission uh, for Africa High Level Panels report le rapport de on illicit financial flows from Africa, mobilisation des ressources the nationales, lutte contre les flux financiers illicites et la corruption against less financial flows and corruption, domestic resource mobilization by the African Union's Commission report in 2015. There's also the recent report of the UNCTAD on 2020 on the economic development in Africa, tackling illicit financial flows for sustainable development in Africa. Alors, la dernière décennie a montré que the la past decade has shown that tax transparency and of course the exchange of information for tax purposes or EOI is a potent weapon for tackling tax evasion. Le rapport sur la transparence fiscale the tax transparency in Africa 2021 report shows that in the past 10 years, years the exchange of information has enabled African countries to identify over 1.2 billion euros of additional revenues. La transparence fiscale et l'échange de renseignements so sont tax également un moyen de lutter contre toutes de flux financiers. Il est aussi un moyen de tackle les autres formes de flux financiers, comme la corruption et le money laundering. Malgré les succès mis en évidence dans le Despite rapport, in this report, il ressort que de nombreux pays ne tirent pas encore profit des avantages offerts par la transparence fiscale tax et l'échange de renseignements. En tant qu'outil permettant de développer la mobilisation des ressources nationales pour répondre aux besoins croissants des dépenses. Spending needs. Par exemple, on peut citer instance, sur le nombre de demandes de renseignements of... envoyées augmente au fil des ans. Uh, sent increases Il est très inégal years. entre les juridictions africaines. Le rapport évoque qu'entre 2019 et 2020, les pays ont à eux seuls été à l'origine de la situation 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 de la L'un des obstacles identifiés à la mise en œuvre de l'échange de renseignements en Afrique est le manque de soutien politique. Mesdames et messieurs, ce panel discutera de cette question et essaiera de trouver des solutions possibles à quoi de soutien politique à la transparence fiscale en Afrique. Pour ce faire, laissez-moi vous introduire le premier paneliste, M. Mouchanga. M. Mouchanga, notre premier paneliste. Il est commissaire au sein de la Commission de l'Union africaine, chargé des développements économiques, du commerce, de l'industrie et des missions. Monsieur Mouchanga, bonjour. Monsieur Mouchanga, good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine. And you? Pretty good, thank you. It's good to see you. Okay. I'm sorry. I will continue in French. No problem. Okay. There's interpretation. Thank you very much. Alors, Monsieur Mouchanga, l'Union africaine reconnaît que la réduction des flux financiers illicites est essentielle pour renforcer la mobilisation IFF des ressources nationales qui et financer ainsi la mise en œuvre de l'Agenda 2063. Implement the Agenda 2063. Cela a été mis en évidence dans le rapport du panel It has de l'Union uh, que j'ai cité récemment. Et dans that I've just mentioned, and in the African, African Union Commission's report entitled uh, Domestic Resource Mobilization Fighting uh, Corruption and Illicit Financial Flows. Alors, ma pour vous. So my first question is the following. Comment voyez-vous les résultats présentés par le rapport What is your transparence fiscal on point on the uh, report on its findings and conclusions, African. and what does it mean for African countries? Thank you very much. Um, I'll begin by really uh, thanking uh, uh, the presentation, very, very elaborate presentation of the report. I think everybody's uh, left in no doubt about the, the messages that are being highlighted. 
And uh, for the African Union, this report means a lot. First of all, it has fully established again that the least financial flows present a serious obstacle to Africa's development. And the numbers are very huge. Anywhere between 50 to $89 billion on direct list financial flows. Then maybe you can add another $50 billion on tax evasion. And this, if not contained, translates into underdevelopment of Africa. So we need to work towards resolving that issue. And it also highlights the importance of political will. All the speakers that have taken the floor have they highlighted the importance of political will in ensuring the ending of illicit financial flows and also mo mobilizing domestic revenues or domestic resources. To achieve that, uh, we need to really build common understanding and build synergies. We have the high level panel, which was established in 2015. And we also have the African Union champion on fighting corruption and they involve this. But beyond that, it's a serious economic issue. And therefore, one of the tasks that I've given myself is to recommend to the African Union Assembly of Heads of State and Government to appoint among their peers a leader and a champion on the domestic resource mobilization and the ending of illicit financial flows. So when we have done that, we have to convince our other colleagues, the high level panel, that uh, we are not taking away their work, but we are mainstreaming it into the issue of economic development. We also have to convince our colleagues working on the issues of anti-corruption drive across Africa that we're not taking away from them, but we are really mainstreaming. So we have to build synergies. Now, the importance of having a champion is that the matter will be on the agenda of the Assembly of the African Union on an annual basis, depending on the amount of information that we bring out. And therefore, when the leader is speaking to his or her peers, they'll be able to understand why they should put a lot of emphasis on these critical issues. There'll be greater buy-in and we shall remove a key obstacle. And against this background, we really um, appreciate the report and we recommend its continued publication and we shall digest the report and share it among the various jurisdictions, including those who are not yet members of this process, and we are going to encourage them to do so. So it's a very, very important uh, report, and we will come it. Thank you. Thank you. Second question. How does your commission sees the role of uh, tax transparency and the exchange of information in fighting uh, illicit financial flows in Africa? Information is key to decision making. If you do not have information, it's very, very, very difficult to make decisions. And sometimes when you make the decisions, you cannot focus on the issue at hand. So when you have this issue of tax transparency and the issue of exchange of information, you are really broadening the base for availability of readily available information. And that information can be used really to uh, focus on decisions. And the, when there's that transparency and the exchange of information, then you also uh, minimize the possibilities of tax evasion, because then everybody now is say, this is the rule of the game. These are the guidelines in which we must behave. And when they follow that framework of uh, uh, acting together, they should be able to say, let's work 
in a very transparent manner uh, to promote the development of Africa. And if there is exchange of information, certainly everybody will be able to be at the wavelength, the assembly wavelength, to say this is what obtains in this jurisdiction, and this is what has gone uh, outside. We need uh, those resources back. So this is a very, very, very important. Uh, we really need to promote it. And like uh, I indicated earlier, we need it to bring it to the high level. Uh, I mean, to the highest level or, or, or level. I mean, to the highest level of, of political buy-in. So uh, it's a very, very, very uh, cardinal issue in the wake of the African Union Commission. Thank you. The report indeed has shown that 32 African countries have already uh, taken part in this initiative. How is the African Union make sure that all African countries will give a priority to exchange of information and transparency? Well, the, 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 the very good thing is that, like I indicated, the report was very elaborate. And already it showed the countries that are already in the program. And I was able to uh, see the countries that are not yet in there. And the, one of them I noted is my only country, Zambia. So as uh, the head of the Department of Economic Development, uh, Trade in, in Industry and Mining, uh, immediately after this meeting, I'm going to uh, have engagement with all the other countries that are not yet in the program. Uh, it's a political process and I'll be able to make use of uh, by, I mean, the political process to, uh, to secure buy-in from them, because there's no reason why they should be out, because it's for their own benefit at the end of the day. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Thank Rushanga. you very much, Mr. Rushanga, for this uh, proposal and for the suggested solutions. And thank you for having answered my questions. Thank you. Thank you. We're now going to move on to our second panelist, Mr. Pascal Saint-Amand, who is the director for the Center for Tax Policy and Administration at the OECD. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you. I'm very pleased to be with you. And thank you very much for having invited me. As a panelist, I also see Zaida and uh, the excellent uh, comment of Mr. Muchanga. So I'm very pleased to be with you. Thank you also for uh, taking part in our meeting. The OECD has been at the forefront of the fight against tax evasion since the beginning of the years 2000, including by initiating the Global Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information for Tax Purposes. This forum has played a key role over the last decade to increase the global tax transparency landscape and to promote international tax cooperation amongst nations. The political momentum is high on the global agenda. Now, my first question is, what has made tax transparency such a success on the global political agenda since the inception of the global forum and what lessons could be learned for Africa? It's an excellent question. And I think it refers us back to the awareness in 2008 that the world had changed drastically and that it was high time to come up uh, with a tax regulation of globalization and fighting uh, tax havens, for instance, was first and foremost about cooperation making sure that countries would assist and support each other. It's really uh, changing completely the concept of sovereignty. For years, all countries, even African countries said, we have our own sovereignty. I don't need to discuss tax matters with, my, with other countries. It's my own domestic business, but the world had changed economically. And uh, there was an urgent need for this cooperation. And the financial crisis has shown and revealed that in order to protect sovereignty, there was a need to further organize transparency and cooperation. 
and uh, where there was uh, uh, tax and uh, bank account secrecy, those countries had to exchange information suddenly. And I think that the OECD had worked in the 1990s on this topic, but became uh, the tool at the forefront of this emergency, which was also taken over by the G20 later on. But it's not the agenda of the um, major countries or developed countries. It's an agenda for all countries. And for Africa, it is paramount. It's paramount for the tax administration in those countries, in these jurisdictions, but also to fight all forms of financial crime, corruption, which is endemic, not only in Africa, but also in other regions. It's also about fighting money laundering, which is a universal ailment, uh, and also in Africa. And what we call illicit financial flows in Africa are uh, pretty much based on this. And the OECD was indeed at the forefront with a standard which was developed and implemented, has uh, helped countries understood that in this new world that there was a need to put an end to bank secrecy and confidentiality. And finally, what mattered was inclusivity. The Global Forum is a body which was set up in a few months between April and uh, September 2009, I was at the same seat as Zaida at that time. And I said to the uh, General Secretary of the OECD, it's no longer the world of G7 and OECD, the world ruled by a few developed country. It's the whole international community that has to work together. And it's, it's true that the image of the OECD is the club of the rich countries, but this image has to change. And we have to include all countries, including African jurisdiction in this process. And that's what we did. And today we're taking much pride in this global forum being a forum with 162 countries and that the Secretariat of the Global Forum is led by Zaida, who's from Brazil, and that uh, the uh, chairman and vice president, uh, chairman of the various groups also reflect the diversity, a gender diversity. We have a, a woman who is uh, chairing the Global Forum. There's also, uh, there was also a South African uh, predecessor to Maria Jose, and for Africa, it's absolutely key for the agenda of uh, domestic resources mobilization. Thank you very much. Next question. What role could the OECD play in further supporting the developing world in general and African countries in particular to make use of the progress made globally in the fight against tax evasion? Well, the role that OECD could play is certainly not uh, OECD helping developing countries. The role we can play is being inclusive, that is making sure that you African countries, but not only Africa, also Asian and Latin America are on an equal footing involved in this process so that your voices can be heard. I think it would be the best way for the OECD to help countries, that is through inclusive inclusiveness. It is true that or the OECD enjoys an advantage as opposed to other international organizations is that there is a momentum, there is a dynamic that we have the capacity to help things change and to deliver, as we say in poor French, that is uh, to uh, have some output. And in order to achieve these output, we have to make sure that we have the right standards uh, that need to be updated today. The new challenge is about Bitcoins, that is uh, virtual and digital uh, currencies, they will have to be included in our standards. And also, second, we have to make sure that there is a proper peer review process. Peer review has to be fair, based on equity, so that all countries are considered on an equal footing and that peers review each other and be demanding with one another. The third aspect is that countries have a capacity and uh, levels of development that are different. And it wouldn't be fair to be as demanding 
uh, with a country with a low level capacity as opposed to a high uh, capacity country doesn't mean that they shouldn't strive to meet the same objective. There are standards that could apply to all countries, and this is what the Global Forum has done over the last 10 years. When an African country, since we're talking about African countries, uh, joins the Global Forum, this African jurisdiction will have to meet the standards. But instead of starting with a peer review right away and, and come up with negative conclusion, the idea is to come up with technical assistance, work with the country, and do what uh, Maria Jose and Zaida have done, that is induction programs, uh, the capacity building programs. Uh, we see with these jurisdictions, where are the gaps? And we provide this technical assistance to make sure that the country will take ownership of this progress, will buy it in. It doesn't come from, the, it shouldn't come from the top or from the outside. It has to be bought in. De changer les règles, et ce n'est qu'alors que l'on. Then there will be time for Parliament to change the rules, and then we will conduct peer review. And I think that the sequence of the approach, this particular sequence, is the best way to help African countries to be really on an equal footing, to have their voice heard, and to benefit from transparency. Uh, through uh, joining the multilateral convention. Today we have 150 members. So when an African country joins as a member, uh, this country gets 141 partners uh, with uh, whom they will be able to exchange. So it's massive. So this is what we hope that we can do. And uh, the forum, the global forum, has important funds to do this. This, the last thing that I want to say, is that we have a partnership. We have to have partnerships with regional organizations in Africa, the African Union, or ATAF, uh, the uh, African uh, Tax Administration Forum. Two essential partners, which mean that we have these local voices, uh, and uh, which mean that the Africans can really own this project. Thank you very much for these recommendations. I have one last question. What is the link between tax transparency, exchange of information, and uh, the uh, other uh, uh, illicit financial flows? Well, I think that the link between the work on transparency and what is currently being done on the BEPS, uh, the uh, base erosion and profit shifting, we keep in French the, ac the French acronym, but uh, uh, Today, we're trying to deal with the challenges raised by uh, digitalization of economies. That's the, the, the very major project on taxing digital work. And so the idea is that these tax sovereignties, which are sovereign by definition, have to actually, actually work together so that we have a kind of uh, uh, agreed upon regulation, something that is well applied by everyone. That's the link between ev all of this. And I hope that we'll continue making progress and be successful. The end of the, of the bank secrecy is a success. We have more than 107 billion euros that were collected for Africa. It was a very major amount that was collected. We're talking about money. Uh, we're talking about money uh, coming into the, the, the pockets of African states. We're talking about uh, tax uh, fairness, uh, because uh, otherwise you're going to have to increase taxes because uh, the, the level of tax uh, revenues is uh, not enough to finance development. But when you're collecting uh, taxes, of course, people react. People don't like to pay taxes. but And, and if they know that multinational companies or the richest don't pay any taxes, how do you want uh, uh, workers in African countries to agree to pay taxes, uh, VAT or income tax or other forms of taxes? So the, the fairness of the system, the fact that everybody pays, including those that are the richest, those that can afford to go abroad. This is really one of the, the pillars of uh, the uh, domestic resource mobilization. And this goes hands in, hand in hand with transparency, with BEPS, and uh, it goes along the line of uh, having a minimum 
world tax being paid by multinational uh, companies, which is uh, to be the subject of an agreement on the inclusive framework. So this is where we're standing today. And we cross our fingers so that in the coming weeks, uh, in the inclusive framework, where we have a, a large number of uh, African country members, we can get to an agreement. Yes. Thank you very much for these questions and these, these answers to my questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move to our third panelist. It is a great honor for me to be able to ask him questions. We're talking about Mr. Gitim Buru, who's the chair of the Africa Initiative and the Commission, Commissioner General of the Kenya Revenue Authority. So good morning again, Mr. Nguru. Morning, good morning, morning, Sandrine. Sandrine. Tax uh, evasion decreases uh, uh, public revenues and increases the tax burden on those who pay their taxes. So the uh, Africa initiative that you're chairing aims at uh, uh, re uh, really uh, uh, freeing the, the, the potential for uh, tax transparency uh, in Africa. The lack of political support is one of the uh, challenges and so my first question to you is, what is the progress made to date by the African Africa Initiative to increase the political buy-in in the tax transparency and uh, EOI uh, agenda in Africa in the context of uh, Agenda 2063? Thank you very much, Sandrine. And um, I start by saying that the report from Zaida was uh, very, very clear in terms of the progress that uh, has been made. Uh, in uh, ensuring that Africans' jurisdictions make take full benefit of the tools available for international exchange of information. And I saw in that report uh, the number of members of the Africa Initiative stands at 32 now, meaning that we are making some good progress. The number of um, uh, African countries that have signed the mark, that have become members of the Global Forum, and even those who have made tremendous use of exchange of information uh, in uh, uh, collecting uh, domestic revenue have, has been increasing. This kind of uh, achievements couldn't have been possible without uh, the work of the Africa Initiative and the Global Forum in ensuring that we uh, make sure that uh, there is political buy-in by African uh, countries. So the Global Forum has been key and the Africa Initiative in terms of uh, organizing forums where we, or fora, where they cre we create awareness to the leadership in Africa and decision makers. First, on the implication of tax evasion and uh, illicit financial flow to domestic revenue mobilization, the kind of harmful impact tax evasion has. So a lot of work has been done in uh, explaining to the, the political leadership and the uh, key decision makers to fully understand what it means, uh, what tax evasion means to the economies. And this has been done through uh, the kinds of engagement that have been done, an, an example being uh, using the, the, the ministerial roundtable during the Global Forum plenaries where the, the Global Forum invites the, uh, the, the, the African leadership to, to, to the round tables where these issues are discussed. Again, a lot of uh, discussions has happened around the benefits of exchange of information as a solution to these challenges. And again, this has been achieved by ensuring that we, the, the, we, we engage the political leadership in, uh, through the ministerial roundtables, and even in the launch of the, the, the tax transparency in Africa report that is being launched to today again and in the past. So the, the Global Forum and the Africa Initiative continues these engagements. And uh, I believe that um, by continuing to help African countries in building capacities uh, to be able to uh, to create what we call uh, structures conducive for exchange of information, ensuring that the, the, the African jurisdictions improve their, their, their frameworks of exchange of information has gone a long way in building in the political support. 
it is very, very difficult indeed to, to, to move this agenda without uh, political support. And I give an example in Kenya, we were able to sign the mark in 2016, but for about a period of four or five years, we had to take a lot of time uh, engaging the, the, the political leaders to ensure that then we are able to have the mark ratified. It tells you because the political leaders uh, determine the allocation of resources in any jurisdiction, and they determine the direction of policy in any jurisdiction, have to be part of, uh, have to be made to fully understand the benefits and the challenges of, uh, of the benefits of uh, exchange of information and also the challenges that are posed by, by, by tax evasion and the illicit uh, financial flows. So these engagements that the Global Forum and Africa Initiative have had through the ministry roundtables, through the meetings uh, uh, like this we are in right now, launching the, the tax transparency in Africa report, ensuring that we, we, we publicize the, 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 the progress in Africa and ensuring that jurisdictions that are left out there, we are, we are able to reach out to them uh, to attend these forums, to attend to training, to be able to, to engage in exchange of information, I've gone a long way in, 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 in ensuring that there is significant progress made by African countries in this transparency agenda. Thank you very much, Sandrina. Sandrina. Merci beaucoup pour votre réponse. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your answer. We were talking about challenges before. Could we come back to uh, this point? What are the remaining challenges in raising awareness of decision makers in Africa? What are the challenges that you're faced with uh, in your approach? Thank you very much again, Sandrine. The challenges, the political will still remains a challenge. As you can see, there are still uh, many African jurisdictions that need to come on board in terms of uh, utilizing the instruments or the instrument of exchange of information uh, on request to come on board again on, on, on implementing the automatic exchange of information to come on board again in terms of signing of the mark and other and, and, and even the, 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 the other agreement on, on, um, on um, uh, the other agreements. So I think that political will still remains a challenge and we have to continue uh, doing a lot. We have to continue with our engagement to ensure that our political leaders are with us in, in this journey. And that engagement would mean that we must reach out to them and utilize all the fora where they meet to articulate this particular agenda. Uh, through the Africa Union, uh, through the other regional bodies like uh, the uh, East African community and the, the other regional uh, bodies. So that political remains a challenge. The other challenge Africa faces, again, remains the, the uh, what you call capacity in terms of uh, utilization of the exchange of information uh, tools. So we need to continue ensuring that there is training, the adequate training of uh, investigators and tax auditors and uh, tax administrators on the benefits of exchange of information and on how to utilize this exchange of, of information. I was very glad to see that now Africa in 2020 has become an, an, a, a net request, requester of information as opposed to a, a net receiver of requests. That to me was a, a very interesting revelation and they're very, very encouraging indeed. It tells you that um, the, the revenue administrators, administrators in Africa are getting to appreciate the, the, the use of this uh, tool and are getting to use it, but there is still a lot of work to be done in that area in terms of training and uh, granting them a full understanding of, of, of the tools, helping them in uh, getting political support and, and, and also, where possible, giving them technical assistance uh, in developing the, 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 the units and the frameworks uh, that are needed to have effective exchange of, of information. I, so I see those two as probably the, the, the political support and the capacity 
being the, the, the two challenges that we shall continue to deal with in Africa in terms of ensuring uh, adequate use of exchange of, of information. Thank you. Merci. Uh, question pour... Thank you very much. One last question. You took the example of your country, Kenya, where you are the head of the tax administration. You were talking about the fact that you managed to obtain commitment of the authorities on the uh, exchange of information agenda. How did you manage to do this? Could you possibly develop this uh, further so that this could then be duplicated by other African countries? What is it that you did? Thank you very much for that uh, very good question. Like I said, I have been in this journey of uh, Kenya uh, becoming a member of the Global Forum and Kenya then uh, I, being able to to go through the first review and the second uh, and the, the second review which we are now preparing for and uh, i remember very well that the, 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 during the first review that we were going through we realized that as a revenue authority we do not host all the information required to be exchanged and therefore we had to rely on other other government institutions and we had to be able to reach out to them to engage them and to have them understand also just like us the role of uh, exchange of information the need to ensure that we have uh, the information required and the need to uh, and how we need the, the importance of exchanging it so we had to go out of our way and uh, hold meetings with these agencies first to have them appreciate what global forum means what exchange of information is all about and what it means for our country so that then they could be part of us and cooperate so that was very very important indeed because you can never as a as a tax jurisdiction alone be able to 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 support exchange of information or be able to undertake full implementation of exchange of information the other important uh, lesson we learned is during the ratification of the, the mark again, we realize that the, the process is more political uh, than operational. And uh, the critical players here were the politicians and you had then to go out of your way to engage them. Again, you need, we, we had to go out and uh, take them through, uh, hold uh, meetings with them and take, have them understand what the, the instrument of mark means and what the benefit is going to bring to our country and uh, how, how important it is in terms of tax administration. So we, we, the engagement is very critical because we, we had to, to ensure that the politicians are with us and uh, to be able to ratify the mark. We had to ensure that even the Ministry of Planning uh, and Finance, which is our parent ministry as a country, uh, as a tax institution, was able to appreciate and work with us through this journey Again, we had to go out of our way and make sure that even other agencies that keep information like the business registration service, which keeps uh, company ownership information, was able to, to, to work with us and uh, be able to, to, to walk this journey uh, with us. So this is very, very, we, we had to incur uh, uh, even our own resources to take them for training, to make them understand that this is a very important matter uh, 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 for us. So you, I would advise revenue agencies to go out of their way to bringing on board these agencies, first by ensuring that they understand the, the role of tax evasion and the role of uh, illicit financial fraud to the development of the country. And number two, their role in this process of ensuring effective exchange of information. And number three, making them uh, as partners you know you you, we, you you work with them as stakeholders and partners i remember in some of the meetings i would uh, come with them to in paris <laughs> to just attend the the global forum meeting so that they can hear for themselves and understand so that to, and that would change their mindset immediately they come back and say now we understand why the revenue agency is very passionate 
about these issues and they would cooperate. So I believe that an engagement with uh, these agencies is the most critical thing, but you, you, African countries could still also explore uh, uh, some legislative framework that compels also these agencies to, co to cooperate in this process. Uh, there, it is possible to um, ensure that you can bring these agencies to cooperate fully also through a supportive legislation that makes it their obligation as well to do this, to provide information and to support the, the, this kind of a process. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you very much. So to summarize your recipe, cooperation with other administrations, engagement and partnership. Thank you very much for your reply. I do hope that the recipe will uh, work also in other African countries. Thank you again. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to take our fourth panelist. And I have to admit, I'm very happy because it, there's finally another woman here. Maria Jose Garde, who is the chair of the Global Forum. Hello. Hello. Hello, Sandrine. Happy to be here with you. And thank you. Thank you so much for answering our questions. You are the chairperson of the Global Forum. Every year, the forum records progress in the fight against tax evasion because of improved tax transparency. Now, when it comes to promoting tax cooperation on an international level, what has the Global Forum done? Thank you very much, Andrine. Um, and thank you for inviting me to this, uh, I mean, uh, very, very interesting and very pleased event to to re to launch the the report of, of the Africa Initiative. I'm I'm very proud of um, the achievements of the, the African Initiative. So I'm I'm really happy uh, to see all this uh, intervention and all the comments on not only African Initiative within the Global Forum because I think uh, the Global Forum is is, is a, key, a very key element. And, and the, his impact, its impact is, is very important for, for cooperation. Uh, I think uh, Pascal uh, mentioned before, if we go back to, to 2009, when uh, the G20 declared the end of, of the era of banking secrecy. Uh, since, since that year, I think Global Forum has uh, contributed to consolidate the, the standards of, of transparency. The international community uh, working through the Global Forum uh, I think has achieved great success in, in the fight against offshore tax evasion. I mean, all the, the previous uh, panelists has uh, showed some of those um, uh, facts. Global Forum member uh, jurisdiction, uh, currently we are 162, if, if I, I am right, have implemented the standards uh, of transparency that uh, have a prompt and unprecedented level of transparency in tax matters and has a very, very positive impact in the fight against tax evasion and other illicit financial flaws as uh, already have been said. The implementation of, of tax transparency standards and its monitoring by the Global Forum, uh, don't forget that the, the role of the Global Forum is basically is what, probably uh, one of the important roles is, is monitoring what the members are, are doing, uh, how uh, they are implementing the, the standards. I said the, this, uh, the implementation of, of the, trans, the transparency standard has narrowed, I think, the field of tax evasion by supplying tax authorities around the world with much needed information to enforce their tax laws. For instance, let me share with you some figures. Over 98% of the 70 jurisdictions review, which uh, had the bank secrecy before restrictions, have removed them from the purpose of exchanging information. Over 40 jurisdictions review that allowed the bearer shares in the past have either abolished them 
or introduce adequate arrangements to ensure the availability of information on their owners. The implementation of the tax transparency standards has translated into additional revenues. At least 107 billion euros in additional revenue, tax, interest, and penalties has been identified worldwide since 2009 through voluntary disclosure programs launched against this backdrop of automatic exchange of information and offshore tax investigation. Of this amount, 29 billion euros was reported by developing countries and almost 10 billion euros was collected following the information provided in response to over 300,000 exchange of information requests received by our members, Global Forum members. Um, the intensification of the exchange of information implementation is changing tax evaders' behaviors, and as some studies are showing. In particular, uh, encouraging fair studies show a correlation, a correlation between the commencement of automatic exchange of information in, in, 20, in 2017 and, and 2018, and a significant decrease, almost 22%, in foreign-owned bank deposits, deposits in international financial centers, and increased deposit deposits between non-international financial centers. So it is also important to note that tax transparency is not only relevant for tackling tax evasion. The lack of transparency facilitates illicit financial flows and therefore improving transparency for tax purposes reduces the exposure to all forms of illicit financial flows. For example, unveiling the legal and beneficial ownership structures of corporate vehicles in legal arrangements as required by the tax transparency standard also assist the law enforcement authorities to prevent uh, or detect the misuse of legal person and legal arrangements for corruption and money laundering. In this respect, the requirement of tax transparency standards to ensure the availability of a beneficial ownership information for legal entities and legal arrangements and its monitoring by the Global Forum has created synergies with other transparency initiatives as the FARAF, uh, the Financial Action Tax Force, recommendation on anti-money anti laundering and counter-financial of terrorism and the extractive industry transparency initiative standard uh, for, for good governance of oil, gas and mineral resources in ensuring that uh, perpetrators of tax evasion and other illicit financial flows have no place to hide. So to, to summarize, to conclude, I think uh, the impact uh, that the, the, the trust transparency, the, the, the role of the Global Forum in the, in the development of, of the tax transparency with all the, the good benefits and, and consequences are as, as really clear as, as, we, as we can uh, see. Thank you, Sandrine. Thank you very much for this reply, for this very detailed reply. Allow me to ask you another question. Since the launch of the uh, Africa Initiative, other regional initiatives have followed. They've been created by the Global Forum and its partners. Now, how important are these other initiatives, the regional initiatives, for the promotion of tax transparency? And what results have you achieved in other regions than Africa? Thank you, Sandrine. Thank you for, for, the, for the question. And uh, I think um, as the Africa Initiative, other regional initiatives are are getting success uh, on this uh, field of, of tax transparency and cooperation. Um, it's, it's true that uh, more than half of, of Global Forum are now developing countries. And these countries is, uh, face unique challenges as, as we can uh, use, we hear from, from our panelists before, including limited capacities, limited resources, and sometimes, or most of the time, as, as we heard from, from the commissioner, insufficient political support to implement the tax transparency standards. Uh, since its launch in 2014, the Africa Initiative has shown the benefit of addressing the problems that countries, the, the, the particular problem that countries face in a regional context. It has uh, therefore provided a template 
for two other regional initiatives, uh, as um, I think Pascal also mentioned, Latin America Initiative and Pacific, Pacific Initiative. If we refer to Latin America Initiative, um, it was uh, November 2018. Minister and Deputy Minister of Latin American countries met um, on the margin of the Global Food Plenary held in Punta del Este in Uruguay to discuss how to use the exchange of information to fight tax fraud and corruption. This is, that is how the Punta del Este Declaration was born in which the signatory countries agreed to lead by example uh, in tackling illicit financial flows through increased international cooperation. The signatories of uh, the Punta del Este Declaration have now established the Latin American Initiative to maximize the effective use of the information exchange under the international tax transparency standards to tackle again tax evasion, corruption, and other financial crimes. This initiative is a collaboration and partnership between the Global Forum with uh, develop, development partners, uh, in particular the Inter-American Center of Tax Administration, the Inter-American Development, Develop, uh, Development Bank, and the World Bank Group uh, to advance the tax transparency agenda in the region and facilitate the implementation of the Latin American countries' commitment. Uh, to date, uh, 12 Latin American countries have signed the Punta del Este Declaration. Ten of them are receiving technical assistance to implement and effectively use the exchange of information standards through three uh, induction programs and seven tailored assistance activities. And three regional trainings uh, held for Latin American countries for over 1,100 officials. So this growing network uh, ensures further regional collaboration and engagement, increases awareness of the importance of the exchange of information, and enhance the overall impact of tax transparency in Latin America. Similar purpose, uh, we can um, call for the, uh, the Pacific uh, Initiative. To close the circle, that this new initiative was launched uh, in October last, last year, 2020, for the Pacific region, the Pacific Initiative uh, is called, aimed at raising awareness and enhanced tax transparency for the benefit of developing Pacific Island. It was launched uh, as a joint initiative of the Global Forum, the ASEAN Development Bank, the Australian Taxation Office, the OECD, the Pacific Island Tax Administrator Association, the New Zealand Inland Revenue Department, and the World Bank Group. The Global Forum uh, and its partners have carried capacity building activities to support uh, Pacific Islands, including some induction programs, tailor assistance and training to support this country, not only meet, uh, but also benefit from the implementation of the international standard. So uh, these regional initiatives, uh, I think uh, are very, very important because uh, first of all, they take into account the region specific circumstances and challenges that influence the implementation and benefiting from the tax transparency standard. It allows us um, to tailor the response to the regional and country specific needs. All these initiatives uh, in general have contributed to the growing membership of the Global Forum because they all know much better what do doing, what, what are do doing, and that we can help them. And uh, also uh, have contributed to a robust implementation of the tax transparency standards, as, as we can see in, in the results of the exchange of information on request being reviewed. Therefore, uh, I would conclude uh, expressing that these regional initiatives are very, very important, play an important role of the global forum strategy to assist our members to benefit of the tax transparency. So I think it's, it's a very, very uh, good um, role for, for, the, for, this, uh, for this initiative to play in this context of tax transparency and cooperation. And thank you very much, Sandri. Merci beaucoup, Madame Gardet. Merci pour Thank you very much, Madame Gardet. 
Thank you for your replies and thank thank you uh, and on, on, on your behalf, the uh, Global Forum, for everything that you do for uh, tax transparency and cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, dear participants, we are now about to receive Mr. Logan Walt, who uh, is uh, uh, the Executive Secretary of the African Tax Administration Forum. Hello, Mr. Walt. Hello, Sandrine. Nice to see you. And it's a great pleasure to see you, to meet you, and thank you for agreeing to answer our questions. Mr. Walt, the ATAF is really on the front line of the implementation of effective systems for uh, tax cooperation to improve African development, and it, it plays a very important role in implementing the, the program in Africa, particularly because it favors uh, cooperation and dialogue on fiscal, on tax cooperation in, in the continent. Now, can you tell me what role ATAF has played in promoting tax transparency in Africa? And can you tell us what the impact has been on tax revenue in African countries? Thank you. I'll gladly do that. And thank you for the opportunity. And let me say also a very good morning to my fellow panelists. It's, uh, uh, it's really great to be part of this panel, uh, the chair uh, of the Af uh, African Initiative and council member uh, also, uh, uh, Commissioner Muchanga, it's really good to see you here. Pascal Santama, Mario Jose, and, and, and Zaida, it's really good to be part of, of the conversation. So, I want to start by really congratulating Zaida uh, for the work that the Global Forum is doing. Uh, Pascal, I forgot that you were here at the beginning, and so I'm happy that you mentioned that, because so much has happened over the years. But the, the main point, if you look at the report today, having sat through this report since the launch in Berlin a few years ago, having sat through these reports, if you look at the progress, uh, the report has changed. It is just uh, so deep and, and, and so full of results. Um, and, and, and it's really great to see how the focus has shifted from the broader sort of you know, transparency, anti-corruption, sign, it's a good thing for you. And yeah. others saying, if you don't sign, we'll, we'll blacklist you. That type of early emphasis is gone. It is there, the results are there. The report shows the training that is being done, the EOI units that is being set up. You can see the impact in the numbers. And I'd really like to congratulate the amount of progress that the African Initiative has made, but the Global Forum in general. So, Seda, thank you uh, for the good work uh, that you and the team has put in, into this. So, looking at ATAF's role uh, in, in this, as the report has shown, we're very much part of the work that we do in our own program and that, that the Global Forum's work uh, does on the continent. We are, we are the partner. It's important to understand that exchange of information is part of a broader bouquet of technical offerings that we require that gives the results. When Maria Jose speaks about the 29 billion on the African numbers and the 107 million on the global numbers, because a lot of numbers are being, are being uh, 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 quoted. And I think it's important to understand the context of how these things work together. And that is what make the work of the Global Forum and the exchange of information work so significant. Because at the basis of this, it supports other programs as well. So together with our own program and that with the OECD and the World Bank, we have a technical assistance program together with tax inspectors with our borders and others. And our latest numbers, we report a 2.3 billion assessment on the continent, a 900 million US dollar money in the bank program. Those are significant numbers, but it brings together our ability to change transfer pricing legislation, to get the country by country reporting right, the common reporting standard, the political signing of, of, of instruments as both Zaida and uh, uh, my, my brother Mburu has explained. So bringing this together, you understand these numbers in, in, in context. And so the ATAF work 
is to continue to intensify the technical support that we also give. ATF has its own five-year program. We, it, it, uh, we renewed our five-year program from the previous five years. And part of this is the work of setting up competent authorities. We do this together with the uh, um, uh, Global Forum. The, the relocation of, of competent authorities from ministries of finance, as you saw in Zaida's report, um, and also the training and the ability to use the information. And then there's the challenge between a voluntary exchange and automatic exchange that was very beautifully illustrated uh, in, in, the, in the presentation. Now, the, the voluntary, the, the, the automatic exchange of information is obviously, the, is obviously the preferred one, but that requires technology. It also requires a gambit of international agreements to, to, to be in place and the security of that information. So that is the type of work that we engage ourselves with, but there are challenges that, that, that one faces. I think African countries lack an extensive treaty network that is required to do this. Um, and this prevents them from receiving country by country reports. So within the whole uh, uh, EOI work, there are sub issues that we need to work on, including the lack of a coordinated government departments exchange of of relevant information to make this work. But we are getting there and the results are showing. So for our own program, we have revised our, our five-year uh, work into EOI going into 2025. We've worked on the toolkit with, with the inclusive, uh, uh, with, the, with the Global Forum. And our current technical assistance program involves eight very specific uh, EOI interventions in, in eight African countries. And we have also added to our human capital two extra uh, resources to work on exchange of information. And finally, also the work on uh, the UN FATCI panel is, is really important. And so we have been working, we are working with them, uh, especially on the recommendation B when they talk about the improving of tax, tax transparency in having all private multinationals publish accounting and financial information. So it's very practical. It deals with licensing. It deals with access to company data uh, in terms of their transactions, but it also deals with the data that we get through the exchange of information agreements. So that is the ATAF collaboration uh, in the broader exchange of information agenda. Thank you, Sidney. Thank you very much. My second question is how can tax transparency and the exchange of information feature prominently in the high level dialogue on tax policy in Africa? How, what is your stance on that? I'll, I'll, I'll make that one brief and simple. We have learned over time that the language and the positioning of our domestic resource mobilization campaign is very, very important. I started earlier by showing how the, the language of the broader global forum when it came to Africa have shifted. And that is very important because if you focus on the results, then you have a different response than when you focus on just telling people you must be transparent and you must not be corrupt because we hear that from everywhere all the time especially as Africans. So the messaging is, is, is tre tres important, very important. And so how do we, how do tax transparency and EOI feature in the high level dialogue? The important part here is to focus on domestic resource mobilization and the numbers and the impact and showing how the agreements bring in numbers and results. As uh, my brother Mburu explained when he took people to Paris, when people say, see results, that is when they buy in. You're gonna find that with carbon tax. You're gonna find that with, with digital economy. It's about the results rather than the philosophy. I'm happy to say my brother uh, from the AU, uh, the commissioner Mchanga is here, that the high level dialogue that we annually have 
will continue, but the African Union has now established a dedicated subcommittee on tax as part of the ministers of finance of the African Union. So this agenda uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, the AU, the issues around this will now move onto that agenda. And that is bringing it into the political space. And that is a very important part. The other way it features prominently is to make the link that I said, so that we do not speak about transparency and, and exchange of information in isolation, but we speak of it when we talk about the extractive industry. We speak of it when we speak about the digital economy. We speak of it when we speak about dealing with incentives and other investments. If you make those links, you do take the issue of transparency and EOI to, to the level at which you want to display it. And that has been our experience. And that is how I think we must continue to feature this prominently in the high level dialogue space. Thank you for having shared your experience with us. My last question is the following. In which ways can the role of the partners of the Africa Initiative in promoting the tax transparency and agenda may be improved? I think it's important that we play our roles. The Global Forum as an international body, uh, Mario Jose and Zaida Itzia, has a massive, massively important convening capability. It also has ministerial level convening capability. It's important that that is strategically used well. And that is the strength the Global Forum brings. Therefore, the messaging and the relationships and the impacts and so on. But it's also important that the numbers and the stats and the, and the, and, and the results that we give is balanced and that it is linked to other activities and then partnerships get stronger and stronger illustrated through this. For in Africa, that is what's gonna bring results for the convening power of the Global Forum, if you follow what I'm saying. Then in terms of the other partners, let me come to the donors for a moment. We appreciate the important role of, of the donors or what is called development partners in other places. But you know, I'm sure the donors don't want to give us money and sit back and wait for the report. Because they are, this EOI thing has got a whole downstream set of activities here. Because in Chad or in Lesotho or in Burkina, in addition to signing the agreement, you now need systems. You now need to pay for licenses for, for access to information. You now need auditors to be trained. So there's a whole range of financial and technical investments that needs to be made. All of this cannot be provided from Paris or from the headquarters of ATA. There are, the, there are bilateral and multilateral programs that must support the building of the legal and the physical and the auditing infrastructure to make the EOI transparency platform work. So I think from a donor, a development part of donor perspective, a little bit more in investing in the infrastructure, the legislative support and the skills would be very good as that part of the partnership. With regards to the other partners, I think they are, they, they, the African Development Bank uh, does a lot of work with ATAF broadly on the continent uh, and on illicit financial flows. Um, but maybe the African Development Bank can um, probably specifically get involved in the point I made earlier about the investment in the infrastructure required around uh, exchange of information and the, and the downstream uh, technicalities that is required. So yes, there are very specific roles for each. And I think if we play it well, we'll probably have an even better report next year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Walt. I hope the partners have listened to your uh, statements. Dear participant, we are uh, reaching the end of our uh, panel discussion.
he, there is no time for a Q&A. So please, if you want to ask a question, raise your virtual hand. While so, there's one question to Mr. Saint-Amand. of the digital economy. If I may, Sandrine, uh, I think the answer is uh, we have an inclusive framework meeting on the 30th of June and 1st of July. So that's where we hope that uh, a deal can be reached uh, so that we can then later report to the G20 finance ministers who will be meeting uh, early July in Venice. Now we're on the last mile. It's it's busy time uh, and we'll see but uh, that's the timeline thank you for this answer for crossing your fingers so uh, good luck to you hope that you will achieve your objective i'm sorry i will have to uh, cut short our debate here uh, because we are a bit late. I will give uh, the floor back to our panelists for a final word. And I will first give the floor to Mrs. Maria Jose Carde for her, her last uh, statement. Thank you, Sandrine. And uh, I mean, I just want to say that um, I encourage all the African countries uh, present and are here to, to join the Global Forum and to join the Africa Initiative because I think it's, there's more, more reasons to, to in benefits to do that uh, because you will find uh, support and assistance to, to find the, the way to, to collaborate and, and to benefit of the, all the, ben, uh, the benefits of the of the transparency and cooperation. So uh, I just want to to uh, thank you, uh, all of you, all the panelists for the for the good uh, work words you're, you're giving to the transparency, the work of the Global Forum. And I, I really thank you. And I hope uh, next next year the, the report will be even better with better results. And thank you very much again. Thank you and congratulations to you. Mr. Walt, you talked earlier about the partners. Would you have a last message to convey? I guess I guess the, the big message about the partners is just this initiative. It's an African initiative. It's a partnership between the Global Forum the African Union, ATAF, and a number of others. And that is the, the base of the partnership. And, and I think we must strengthen it. We must intensify it. Um, and uh, the, the results lies in the success of that partnership. So for me, just to say that, uh, you know, the chair of ATAF is here, the vice chair of ATAF, council members are here, um, and the commissioner from the AU. We are broadly committed uh, to the principles of exchange of information and transparency and to the Africa initiative. And we must make this work and we will. So thank you. Thank you. You're absolutely right. And we need the OECD. So Mr. Saint-Amand, what would be your final word on this? Well, my final word is that uh, we are uh, relying on African countries so that uh, they are fully involved in this work so that they can promote transparency. And it is a challenge in Africa. The tax administration's representatives who are here are convinced of that. So, But we have to collectively promote this agenda uh, with uh, policymakers and politically because it will help for the uh, mobilization of domestic resources in Africa. Thank you very much. I'm now giving uh, the floor to Mr. Albert Muchaga for the African Union Commission. Would you have a final word for the participants, Mr. Muchanga? Thank you very much, moderator. And to thank each and every panelist for contributing. 
as well as uh, the presentation. There has been a very rich exchange of uh, information and I think new insights have been developed in the process. I think the key core is uh, for universal membership of African Union member states in the Africa Initiative. And I take it as uh, my political responsibility to ensure that uh, we come up with a very strong advocacy program so that uh, uh, within my tenure of office, which is the next uh, three and a half years, we should have all the African Union member states being part of the process. I think it's going to lay a very stronger foundation for domestic resource mobilization and economic development. Once again, thank you very much. Merci. Uh, thank you, thank you. And I would like to thank with Mr. Gitli Muguru, the chair of the Africa Initiative. Mr. Muguru, final word. Thank you very much, Sandrine. Uh, mine is to thank the members or the panelists for making very able and deliberate presentations. We very practical indeed. The solutions that we are being ascribed, prescribed here are very practical. And uh, so I must thank all, all the panelists for a job well done. And also be able to emphasize on the message that we must continue to demonstrate to the political leadership the negative impact of tax evasion and illicit financial flow, what they mean in terms of depriving our economies, the much needed resources, and we must then continue presenting uh, exchange of information as the most efficient solution in dealing with the international dimension of tax evasion and illicit financial flow. Once we demonstrate this, we will continue getting political support from the, the, the leadership and then the tax administrations and the, the will continue being strengthened and countries will continue benefiting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of you. I'd like to thank each panelist and I would like to thank all those who've attended this first session. I know that there are still some questions in the chat. Will it be possible to answer these questions at a later stage? Yes. There is a one last question which goes to uh, the uh, Commissioner for African Union. It is clear that exchange of information has benefit has benefits for enhancing tax revenue and domestic resource mobilization. How will the AU Commission ensure that EOI exchange of information is put at front burner of the discussions at the head of state and minister of finance forum at the AU? Thank you very much. I think uh, that uh, question has been answered uh, by myself and other speakers. First of all, we have a subcommittee related to issues of taxation within the regular meeting of the ministers of finance, monetary affairs, development planning, and economic integration. I think that was elaborated. And the, the first, then there's also the annual meeting of the Africa Tax Forum. All these issues are brought into play and we make reviews. And then I also indicated that I would like to take it at the highest political level by coming up <clears throat> with a leader and champion on issues of domestic resource mobilization and the illicit financial flows. So it's going to be a very, very important issue on our agenda because it's key to the economic development of Africa. Thank you. Merci bien. Alors, je rappelle qu'au cours de cette session, nous avons Thank you very much. Uh, throughout the session, we tried to identify the, the challenges that can African countries still face uh, to adopt and implement uh, tax transparency and EOI. 
uh, including the lack of political support in many African countries. We also established the link between tra tax transparency uh, and uh, EOI and the fight against uh, tax uh, evasion, as well as the uh, means to look for more political support for this uh, agenda. So thank you very much to all for having participated in the panel, and I give the floor back to our moderator. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're actually going to give the floor to the uh, chairperson of the Africa Initiative. Over to you, Mr. Chair. So thank you very much, uh, Sandrine, for a very, very well moderated session, very insightful indeed. Thank you for bringing out and making it very clear in terms of uh, the questions and uh, eliciting the, the kind of responses that would benefit. Uh, the participants. Thank you very much indeed. We have now looked, we have looked at uh, making um, the Merci. tax transparency a priority in Africa. And we now want to move ahead and see how we now can translate that tax transparency, that progress that has been made into revenue gain for the African uh, continent. So I will be I'm now presenting the second panel to this discussion. It is going to give us insights in translating progress made into revenue gain. So I would like to present the panelists who are Ms. Karina Sugden, Chief Gov uh, Governance uh, Officer Governance and Public Financial uh, Financial Management Coordination Office, Africa Development Group, Bank Group. Our second panelist is Elika Guretsen, Acting Director, Direct, Directorate General for International Partnership, European Commission. Our third panelist is going to be Chennai Mukuba, Policy Research and Advisory Manager, Tax Justice Network Africa. Our fourth panelist is going to be Felipe Chodi, Commissioner General, Office of Grace, Telecetes, and Ataf Chairperson. The fifth pan panelist is going to be Professor Leons Dikumana, Independent Commission for the, uh, for the Reform of the, Interna of, of the International Corporate Taxation. And finally, Mr. Edward Kisweta, Vice Chair of Africa Initiative and Commissioner of South Africa Revenue Service. Our moderator for this session is going to be Mr. Maxime Koami Domeni, journalist, Francophone Africa editor, Global Investigative Journalism Network. I, I wish now to hand over to the moderator, Mr. Maxime, to carry on. Thank you very much, Maxime. Welcome. Merci beaucoup, uh, Monsieur le Président, uh, Monsieur Mbulu, Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for this presentation, for this introduction. And thank you uh, to all of the previous panelists and to the moderator. We are going to see how we can translate the uh, progress made in terms of uh, tax transparency in uh, uh, revenue gains for African countries. So it's a real pleasure for me to moderate this panel because as an investigative journalist in the past, I had the occasion to uh, work on the question of uh, 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 illicit financial flows. And it is therefore a great honor for me to uh, 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 moderate this panel. Uh, uh, Africa, uh, so the uh, report uh, uh, indicates that more African countries are actively engaged in EOI and uh, using uh, uh, cross-border exchange information in their tax audits, uh, investigations, and other compliance activities. For instance, the number of EOI requests uh, sent in 2020 increased by 21%, even though the number of African countries making those requests decreased. And for the first time, African countries became net senders of EOI requests. And in addition, 
the group of African countries which sent more requests uh, uh, than they received uh, rose from five in 2019 to eight in 2020. Now, despite the progress showcased by the uh, tax transparency report in Africa in 2021, many African countries are still yet to reap the benefits offered by tax transparency and EOI as a tool for combating IFFs uh, to enhance domestic uh, uh, resource mobilization to meet growing domestic spending needs. Four countries alone accounted for 91% of all outgoing requests, while four countries accounted for 90% of all incoming requests in 2020. Indeed, only a small number of African countries uh, uh, managed to uh, generate additional revenues through EOI. And so in this panel, we're going to see how we can translate these uh, tax transparency efforts into uh, revenues. So in the first uh, phase, I would like to turn to Ms. Karina Sugden. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So you are the chief uh, governance uh, officer. Uh, and uh, Governance and Public Financial Management uh, uh, Officer for the African Development Bank Group. The um, uh, uh, African Development Bank joined the Global Forum as an observer in 2015. It now has a policy and strategic framework and action plan against IFFs uh, since 2017. So according to you, uh, what are the main obstacles uh, that African countries face in implementing and benefiting from the tax transparency standards? So just no let problem. me. <laughs> so on behalf of the African Development Bank Group, just let me start by thanking the Global Tax Forum for inviting me to take part in marking the launch of this edition of the Trans Tax Transparency in Africa report. And it is with great pleasure that I'm a part of such a distinguished panel to today. So the Africa Initiative is really timelier than ever. Let me just give a bit of context. Over a year has passed since the COVID-19 pandemic hit the entire world and the economic repercussions have been considerable. On the African continent, we saw GDP contract by 2.1% in 2020. Governments, they responded appropriately, significant measures were taken, but this has, and it continues to put a serious strain on public finances. And the African Development Bank Group, we have estimated that governance need, governments will need financing amounting to close to $154 billion in this fiscal year alone to respond effectively. So all of this has really accentuated the need to reinforce our efforts to mobilize revenues for the continent. And then in parallel to this, there's also the increased pressure, pressure and demand for greater transparency and accountability from governments in how they spend these revenues, as well as demonstrable actions to combat corruption, illicit financial flows, and money laundering. And this has clearly contributed, in my view, towards opening the dialogue on tax transparency. And to build on what was already extensively discussed in the last panel, it has created an impetus for greater political engagement to take action. And this really brings me back to your question on what the main obstacles are. So assuring political engagement and national ownership of the reforms required to implement the standard for automatic exchange of information is really the first obstacle that needs to be crossed. If there is not the political will or the interest to engage, then we will not be uh, able to advance. And we are very well aware that there are vis vested interests among political figures and internal pressures that may work against this. And I think the commissioner general from Kenya really uh, uh, elucidated on this uh, in his intervention in the last panel. This is really entwined uh, with the second main obstacle, which is, uh, of course, around uh, capacity. But without the political buy-in and leadership, it will be hard to create the incentives and obtain the resources required to drive those changes and undertake the necessary investments on the administrative and capacity side. And these changes and investments are not insignificant. The reforms uh, we are talking about, they're complex and they require commitment over the medium to long term uh, in order to build human capacity, put in place the appropriate organizational setup, uh, changing business processes and procedures, and of course, uh, uh, supporting uh, the installation of IT systems. And it's not only governments that need to plan uh, for these investments, but also the financial institutions, the banking sector, that also need to provide this uh, information. 
Uh, another important thing I think to consider is that one size will not fit all. Uh, the capacity levels uh, across African countries vary significantly. Uh, some countries uh, are even struggling just with their ordinary national tax collection efforts to let alone embark on international taxation. And also uh, linked to this, uh, despite it being a, a FATF recommendation for a while, many uh, in countries in Africa do not have uh, adequate beneficial ownership registries and are far from starting to make any information public. Now, assets cannot be, identified, uh, cannot be effectively identified and taxed without knowing who owns them. So in, in addition to this, and I think that was uh, also a point highlighted in previous uh, uh, panel, is the co internal coordination and communication within governments. It is not just the revenue authorities alone that need to uh, gather and, and, and provide the information needed to conduct those tax audits. And so, so there, there is also a need for a substantive work. And then of course, IT systems. I think this is very much emphasized also by the Global Tax Forum that, that there is really a need uh, to support the digitization agenda and, and all that goes with it, including data protection and so on and so forth. And, and, and the lack of all this really will thwart any ability of uh, regional, our regional member countries or African countries to advance coherently on this agenda. Um, I do also though recognize that we are seeing some great, uh, we are seeing good progress, but perhaps when it comes to the AEOI or the exchange of information, there is maybe what we're seeing, you know, to explain the, 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 what the findings of the report, a situation of biting off more than one can chew. You know, governments, they have signed the agreements to start exchanging information, they have made the requests, but perhaps they do not yet fully have in place the infrastructure to efficiently and effectively manage and make optimal use of it. Um, and it's linked to what I was saying earlier, you know, uh, that having the adequate human resources, the tax auditability, poor coordination, uh, IT systems, this may make um, completing investigations uh, much more difficult. Linked to that, I, I really think uh, we, we need to actually ask those countries themselves, you know, what is it that's causing these delays and, and are these indeed the issues? But, but as, I, as we see it in the Africa Development Bank, this is it. It's the, it's the infrastructure investment, it's the, the capacity, investment and capacity that's needed. Um, so really there is a need to continue to find ways to ensure that the individual countries get the support that is tailored to their needs. And um, I think that the activities under the Africa Initiative are certainly, certainly steps in the right direction. And uh, the African Development Bank, we are certainly also committed to doing, uh, to doing our part. Thank you very much. Oui, justement, merci beaucoup, Madame Sagden. Thank you very much, Mrs. Sagden. Indeed, you identified a number of uh, obstacles, uh, uh, the lack of political will, the uh, implementation of reforms, cooperation, uh, and so on. But at the level of uh, uh, the African Development Bank, are there already interventions that have been made to face up to these challenges? And what are the results that you obtained? And what are the, the lessons that we might draw okay, from you, these? Uh, thank you very much. That, for that question. Um, so let me just start by saying that, that, that at the African Development Bank, we're very committed to this agenda. Um, this year, in fact, we approved um, our strategy for economic governance in Africa, which will define the priority areas of intervention uh, on the continent over the coming five years. And domestic resource mobilization is a key area of priority in that strategy. And it encompasses strengthening the efficiency and transparency of taxation and combating illicit uh, financial flows. Combating illicit financial flows is really important because not only the illicit financial flows related to tax fraud and evasion deprive governments of the resources necessary for development, this corruption also deters investments, it undermines fair competition, erodes public trust and undermines rule of law. Now we have been providing substantive support to strengthening revenue administrations over the years and advancing the transparency agenda on the continent. In the past five years alone, uh, we have supported uh, close to 29 of our regional member countries in implementing tax reforms. This 
includes support to digitization, uh, building capacity of tax auditors. We are also, uh, as was mentioned by uh, Logan Wart, uh, very much supporting uh, regional networks uh, such as ATAF, who have a very important role uh, to play. And recently, um, this work, you know, in the past few years and, and this year in particular, it has focused much more on tax transparency and evasion and helping countries adhere to international standards such as Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, the Inclusive Framework on Base Erosion and Profit Shifting, and the Automatic Exchange uh, of Information. And we are really seeing that a shift because awareness, awareness is being built across the continent on these subjects. And because there's a growing awareness, we are seeing a growing demand for support. And this includes uh, uh, providing knowledge and policy advisory services. Uh, it includes promoting the reforms through our uh, policy dialogue and our budget support operations, as well as providing the capacity building support and supporting uh, uh, the digitization efforts. So one example, a uh, recent example that I can highlight, which is ongoing is what we're doing, for example, in Senegal, where we have a three year budget support operation and we're engaging with in policy dialogue with the government around uh, the development of their medium term revenue strategy, within which uh, we, uh, we are pushing for advancing on international taxation agreements and tax transparency. And uh, our program includes key targets to establish the required le legislative and institutional setup to enable this information exchange. But we've also complemented the budget support with uh, capacity support to reinforce the IT systems and train staff. And we are really very uh, happy to say that we are partnering with the Global Forum specifically on this project to provide the technical expertise. But uh, as I mentioned, we are really planning to do much more. And we have a significant pipeline of new projects. And I'm so pleased to be on the panel with the Commissioner uh, General, uh, uh, Philippe Chaudy, because uh, uh, Togo is one country that the bank has been proud to working with over many, many years and has been supporting the amazing reforms undertaken by Togo on advancing um, l'office uh, togolaise de recette. And we are now working with them to see how we can help Togo advance on their transparency agenda. So, so this is something we're, we're looking forward to in the coming years. Uh, other countries also, because I took note in the report, you know, recent members of the Global Forum are Mali. We are also in discussions with Mali on how we can support them. Uh, same with uh, Lesotho and a few other uh, countries. So lessons. Um, and so I'll wrap up here with, with some key, key lessons on, on, from our work so far. Uh, tax transparency matters okay. really uh, need to be nested within the broader domestic resource mobilized strategies, um, domestic resource mobilization strategies at the country level. As I mentioned earlier, these are complex reforms and they need uh, medium to long term commitments. So they need to be planned and executed carefully. And they are entangled with the national efforts to broaden the tax base and modernize and digitize administration. So they need to be part of that broader DRM strategy. Also, as I previously mentioned, we have to be careful not to apply a one size fits all approach. The levels of capacity and the needs vary significantly as do the political contexts and different countries are facing different challenges. Uh, at the African Development Bank, we are in particular aware, of course, of the situations in transition states, which are really not similar to situations of middle income uh, transition states, such as Mali, Niger, Chad, so on, which are not similar to the situations and the needs of middle income countries such as Mauritius, Morocco or South Africa. And um, finally, at the, the African Development Bank, we really believe in the value of partnerships and in building synergies in what we do and our convening power and ability to engage dialogue at the highest level will be far more successful when it is complemented by the technical know-how and expertise that can be offered by our regional and internal partners, um, such as ATAF, uh, the Global Forum, and let me also mention JABA and EITI. So uh, we Merci really- Merci uh, ah, Yes, thank you so much. <laughs>
Merci beaucoup, Madame Sagden. Thank Merci. you very much, uh, Ms. Sagden. Uh, uh, you mentioned Senegal as well, where I live, uh, and Togo as well, two, two countries that benefited from your help. Uh, and you mentioned that there are specific needs. Indeed, there's no one size fits all. We have to look at the uh, situation of each and every country and try to come up with the adequate solutions. Thank you very much. Je vais maintenant me tourner vers vous. Vous êtes directrice par intérim de la Direction générale des, partena des, des partenariats internationaux. Miss Erika Gerritsen, director from the uh, Directorate General for International Partnerships at the European Commission, supporting tax uh, transparency in Africa to facilitate the mobilization of national revenue and supporting, in, in particular, in Western Africa, program launched since 2020 the implementation of uh, trade policies. One of the main components of that is the uh, fight against tax evasion via strengthened tax transparency. So the EU is a very important player for Africa in terms of tax transparency and also a development partner. How do you see the that these two roles complement each other? Thank you very much, Maxim, for this introduction. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for the for the invitation and for the opportunity to speak uh, to speak today uh, at uh, at this uh, this panel. And uh, really uh, happy to to be part of the of the launch uh, of the of the report. Uh, it's it's really a great um, a great um, uh, challenge that Africa is uh, is actually facing uh, around this agenda of uh, tax transparency. And uh, uh, the EU is very proud to uh, to take part in this and to uh, to, to to bring it its uh, its uh, support in this in this endeavor and and indeed there is both a political as well as a policy dimension uh, to it um, and and i will come to it but first um i would like to really welcome the publication of the <clears throat> tax transparency uh, in africa report it it shows uh, and and that's really very positive it shows real good advancements um and and, and actual results uh, and uh, progress in in that tax transparency is um, uh, having real results for the um, um, revenues, uh, domestic revenues of uh, African countries. So that's the first very good news. At the same time, it's also telling us that there's a lot that remains to, to be done. And, and I'm therefore also very happy to be part of this discussion um, today. So Maximus, coming to your question, uh, indeed, the European Union is, is both a political actor uh, on, on tax and uh, tax transparency, as well as a development partner on the own on these topics. And this is, this is why it's really important for us to, to play on this complementarity uh, in our roles uh, and to reinforce um, uh, each other in support to, uh, to the challenges uh, faced by, by Africa when it comes to uh, domestic revenue mobilization. Um, it also implies for us, obviously, a very heavy responsibility as EU. And we are proud here uh, to, uh, uh, to, to use the terms leading by example um, and uh, uh, ensuring also policy coherence um, in, in our action in these, uh, in, in these uh, complex matters. We are and uh, have been supporting the Global Forum uh, and many uh, African countries um, and many members of the Global Forum in the, in the last uh, few years. Actually, since the Addis Agenda um, on the financing for development, this topic of domestic revenue mobilization has become more and more important for us uh, in our policy engagement with, with partner countries. And, and, and therefore, the work of the Global Forum in this context, we see as absolutely essential and, and central and, and are therefore very proud to be partnering with, uh, with the Global Forum on, the, on, on tax transparency. So uh, the, 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 what, the way we are uh, looking at this is that um, as EU, uh, because we want to, uh, to, to, to lead by example, we also want to uh, step up our ambition on this agenda for uh, the internal dimension of the EU. And, and you know that there are um, uh, currently very uh, hectic and, and intense discussion on, on this topic, uh, but also in, the, in, the, in working with our partner countries um, uh, outside. Actually, just uh, last week, uh, you may have noticed that the Commission, the European Commission, has adopted an ambitious uh, communication um, on business taxation for the 21st century, putting forward the legislative uh, agenda, including tackling shell companies and, um, and the greater transparency on effective uh, taxes paid by multinational 
companies. This is in addition to the to the final finalization of the legislation on the uh, public uh, country by country reporting. So the, 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 uh, all these um, this work on transparency also needs to be accompanied by by important legal uh, and legislative work and and the european commission is uh, is is very happy to to lead the way in this uh, working also together with the oecd obviously uh, tax the tax policy is not a competence of the eu uh, as such it remains a, a strong a competence of the of the member states of the european union however it does not mean that the commission cannot Put proposals on the table, and this is uh, exactly what we did um, last week with this uh, with this proposal. So that's that's how how by working on actors like the Global Forum and and even individual uh, partner countries, obviously in Africa, as well as on the political and the international agenda on tax issues, we we see our role on playing both on the political and the policy dimension of this agenda. Merci, merci beaucoup, Madame Galette. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Gerritsen. It's a fact that the European Union is sometimes accused of, of uh, including members that receive, that are at the receiving end of an illicit financial uh, flows and of hosting multinationals that uh, are active in Africa, but who, who practice illicit financial flows from Africa. So what is the what, what's, what's the discussion like when you discuss with uh, stakeholders, including countries that will not be named, but they are mentioned in the, in the news regularly, and also when you discuss with the multinational companies, what, what's the spirit like in those discussions? Uh, how do they react to having to discuss tax transparency in Africa? discussion is as i said about the legislative framework on the one hand but also on the um, on transparency and and that's that's really a very um important piece of, uh, of work within the Commission and uh, this uh, again this country by country reporting uh, work uh, that that we are uh, running and that we are proposing um, is is at the center uh, of this uh, of this agenda at the same time the European Commission is very uh, much engaged in the uh, in um, the fight against um, uh, illicit financial flows in general uh, and and we believe that by at the same time reinforcing the legal framework within the EU, but also in, in partner countries and in regions like uh, like, Af like Africa, we can make this agenda uh, move uh, forward in, in the most uh, uh, efficient manner. So by, by promoting tax transparency, um, which is a fully part uh, of, the, of fighting tax evasion and, and avoidance, and by uh, making this a key contribution to the illicit financial flows uh, agenda, uh, we believe that we can jointly as EU and and, and AU and, and, and African um, countries move this uh, this agenda um, in in a, in a most uh, in a, in a more uh, effective uh, manner. Uh, it's it's all this is all part of our good governance objective and uh, and and I believe that uh, uh, by by working uh, on this through this transparency uh, dimension we can be more efficient uh, together uh, in 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 finding the, the the right ways to avoid this this these illicit uh, financial flows and and reducing. Uh, tax, evade, tax evasion and, and, and avoidance. Uh, as for the rest of the agenda and um, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the tax rates, for example, this, this is a discussion that is uh, currently going on in the context of the OECD, uh, as you know. So the, this, the agenda, uh, the tax transparency point in relation to this uh, agenda of illicit financial flows and tax avoidance is one part of it, but I see it as a very central part of it because without this tax transparency, the rest of the agenda will not uh, will not succeed. And then coming back maybe to 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 the more um, external uh, cooperation uh, dimension of, of this uh, of this work that uh, that that we do, um, uh, we also find it really important to look at the domestic revenue mobilization agenda together with the the spending side of things because we believe that this is also how we create the trust of um, uh, and the trust of the, uh, the the taxpayer and uh, by showing that actually the, the taxes that you mobilize and, and also here through the tax transparency uh, agenda and the, the, the taxes that are raised by this are raised first in a fair manner. So everybody needs to pay their fair share of taxes. That's the first principle. And at the same time, the citizen needs to see that this, this revenue is used uh, for the right purpose, 
for the governments to put in place uh, policies that actually serve the citizens, provide um, basic so social services to the populations and to the most um, uh, to the most vulnerable populations in particular. A little bit like uh, the uh, that Karina was explaining for the African Development Bank, as you know, the European Commission uh, is also one of these uh, rare donors that still provide grant budget support in uh, in in quite um, uh, big volumes. Uh, actually, in 2020, as a response to the COVID crisis, uh, the European Commission has dispersed worldwide 3 billion euros of grant budget support around the world in support to the to the to the partner countries in the in financing their uh, their, their policy responses to the to the covid crisis on the health side and and on the, the on the economic uh, uh, side of the of the crisis and by by through these budget support programs exactly like karina was explaining we we also hook and 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 the, the point about domestic revenue mobilization as well as the quality of spending that uh, that that goes with it and we push for reforms that go in the good in the in the right direction for um, uh, inclusive uh, spending and um, uh, and and that's that's an important dimension uh, for us maybe a, a last point because we um which which is very close to our to our heart is our engagement in the Addis tax initiative uh, we have uh, we have last uh, we, we have last year uh, and this year now um, uh, renewed the declaration for the uh, through the Addis tax initiative the commission has been very much engaged in this and and this is an important piece of work for us because it brings together the countries the international organizations and the civil society in this uh, in this agenda and I'm actually very happy to to see that uh, last week in the um, in the summit on the um, on the financing of African economies that was uh, organized by France, the, in the declaration that has been adopted at the occasion of this event, uh, you may have noted that the DRM agenda is is very central. Uh, uh, among other very central um, aspects of, uh, of the work uh, in financing African economies. And there is a specific mention uh, in support to the Addis Tax Initiative. And we think this is, uh, this is really important and positive uh, for the future. Merci beaucoup, Madame uh, Gerritsen. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Gerritsen. And, and uh, thank you for these details. I'm now going to turn to uh, Ms. Chennai Mukumba, who is in charge of policy research and advocacy with the Tax Justice Network Africa, a very active civil society organization when it comes to tax transparency and, and preventing illicit financial flows everywhere in the world, but more specifically in Africa. So uh, civil society, uh, can it play a role in, in uh, well, yes, it, in, it most certainly can. And Tax uh, Justice Network Africa is, is one of the pioneer organizations. So what is, in, in, view, in your view, the impact of uh, trans, uh, tax transparency in improving uh, mo the mobilization of, of revenue and, and fighting illicit flows from Africa? Thank you so much for that question, Maxime. Um, and thank you so much to the organizers of this meeting for inviting us uh, to this platform. Um, so to respond to your question, Maxime, um, in terms of the impact that tech transparency could have in improving DRM and illicit financial flows, at TGNA, um, we really believe that if you're able to curb illicit financial flows, um, you really go a long way in promoting sustainable economic development for, for African countries. Um, and so when you take a look at the impact that tax transparency and EOI can have in terms of improving DRM. Um, this is very significant and very profound. I know Zaida in her presentation mentioned that um, as a continent, we're losing um, just over $86 billion um, in terms of illicit financial flows every single year. Um, and then to put that in context, she mentioned that that's almost half what the financing requirement for Africa is in order to meet um, its SDG commitments. Um, but also to add it, um, to add a little bit more perspective, um, that $86 billion is almost uh, double um, the amount of money that Africa receives in overseas development assistance every year, um, and almost double as well the amount of money that Africa is receiving in foreign direct investment. Um, and so essentially our, our view as TJNA is that if we're able to curb 
um, this issue of illicit financial flows, which really, um, like, like Erica mentioned just now, need and require tax transparency, we'd be able to address this particular issue that to some degree, to a large degree actually, um, is affecting the, the sustainable economic development of the continent. Um, but further to just that number, one of the things that we have seen in terms of the impact of IFFs um, is that it has multiplier effects in other sectors of the economy. So for example, countries that have high IFFs um, essentially only have about a third of their agriculture productivity levels. Um, and similarly, when you take a look at countries that have high IFFs, you can see that their spending in key social sectors um, is less by up to 70% in, in, in certain degrees. And so the curbing of illicit financial flows and putting in place the necessary measures um, to do so would have a significant impact, um, particularly on DRM and curbing um, IFFs within the continent. Precisely, how can we put in place such measures? What are the mechanisms that are needed? So, and what's, so, what's the most urgent thing to do? What should we prioritize in the near future? Yeah, so, so you know, in the work that we do, we've, we, we take a look at this conversation from, from two different perspectives, right? Um, so we find that the challenges um, in, in terms of um, you know, having African governments embrace tax transparency um, in order to contribute to the reduction of IFFs is, is really twofold. Um, the first is the understanding that co the conversation about IFFs isn't, isn't happening in a silo. Um, when you take a look at uh, the conversation about IFFs, there's a lot of work and emphasis that's currently being placed on um, the necessary measures that African countries need to put in place in order to, to curb IFFs. Um, but one of the things that we really emphasize in the work that we do that is, is that it needs to be a global conversation. Um, and I think Maxine, you actually even um, uh, pointed to it earlier when you spoke to the fact that, you know, when you take a look at IFFs, there are certain countries um, that are to some degree perpetuating these IFFs. Um, and so we are of the view that in order to begin to, to, to get African countries to promote tax transparency in, EO, in, EO, in EOI, what we also need to see is political will at the global level um, by both developing and developed countries, because it's an issue that's being perpetuated, um, like I mentioned earlier, by, by countries um, that are you know, in the global north and contributing to this problem. The second challenge I think that we see, and this is something that's been already spoken to by a number of the panelists already, are some of the national levels, uh, some of the national constraints that hinder uh, the, the, the embracing of tax transparency in EOI. Um, and again, these issues are twofold. There is insufficient technical capacity. Um, there's also insignificant um, infrastructure, um, all of which needs to be addressed in order to effectively make use um, of these mechanisms. Um, and also, I know this has also been mentioned, the, the idea of needing and requiring political will. Um, the high level panel report that we uh, refer to a lot in our work speaks to the fact that in order to essentially and, and effectively curb IFFs, this is an issue that we need to deal with. Um, and, and when you're talking about political will, you're talking about a need to support this agenda from the highest offices of government um, in order to see progress within this area. And one of the things as well, sort of speaking to the role of civil society, um, we as well also have a role to play in helping manufacture this political will in order to address this agenda. And precisely, when you mention political will, and so did other speakers on the panel, it is necessary to have political will. And as you just said, civil society has its own role to play in that. The citizens have something to do, don't they? What is the actual role of, of organizations such as yours? What can you do and what can ordinary citizens do when it comes to implementing transparency mechanisms in Africa? There's a lot of different um, stakeholders that can contribute to this conversation in terms of how to generate political will. Um, so civil societies, um, such as us, for example, what we what we do is generate evidence. Um, one of the things that we're doing actually at the moment um, is developing a track of a beneficial ownership that civil societies can use in order to hold their governments to account. 
um, but civil societies also have a role to play in raising awareness, the awareness of, of, of the public um, in terms of the importance of these different issues. Um, and that also in and of itself has a very key component, um, is a very key component within this conversation um, because the public is essentially um, who then is in a role to hold the government to account. But in terms of other stakeholders, um, we also see the value, for example, of the role that the media can play, specifically journalists. Um, I think they can also play a lot, a big role, particularly if they've got key access to information that they can then use, um, I think, to draw to light some of the issues that um, are, are causing and contributing to, to, to illicit financial flow. So, so I think this conversation um, really needs to be very multi-stakeholder um, and all of the different actors I just mentioned and, and others as well, for example, including parliamentarians have a key role to play in generating political will um, to promote tax transparency and EOI. Merci beaucoup, Madame Chenay Mukumba. Merci pour Thank you very much, Mrs. Uh, Chenay Mukumba. I'm now going to turn to Philippe Todé, who is the uh, general commissioner of the Office de Gaulle des Recettes, and he's also the uh, president of ATAF, a tax administration firm in Africa. So you have two caps, let's say. So I will ask you a question about Togo. Togo joined the Global Forum in 2016 and has made significant effort to meet the international standards and build up its EOI framework. Now, what are the measures that Togo has uh, implemented to comply and implement the EOI standards? Uh, thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank that we're very happy uh, and uh, pleased that we've been uh, convened uh, to this uh, session. And we're very pleased with the findings of the report. And we are pleased for two reasons, because as you've said, as a head of the tax administration of Togo, but also as uh, at have chairperson, I also wanted to uh, warmly welcome the report, which has been uh, presented uh, namely because of the uh, encouraging uh, findings. And also would like to take the opportunity to congratulate all the teams and all the stakeholders and uh, people who've been involved in drafting this report. And particularly, I'd like to highlight uh, the uh, very good cooperation between ATAF uh, and the Global Forum and the uh, Secretariat. We are uh, very pleased of this result and even more pleased about uh, the findings for our country. And we're hoping that in the future, we will reinforce even further this uh, partnership. Now, to uh, answer your question, uh, what are the steps that have been uh, made in Togo since we've joined the Global Forum. Well, I'll have to go back in history. In fact, in the 70s, Togo had signed a non-double taxing uh, tax convention between France and Togo, and also with the ACP uh, countries. So that is Africa, the Caribbean, and the Pacific countries. But it all started in 2016, as you've said, when uh, uh, there was an ATAF and the Global Forum uh, mission that have uh, helped us to um, join the Global Forum in 2016. And we've therefore signed the Young Day uh, Declaration on Illicit Financial Flows and we've also joined the Africa Initiative as well as the uh, ATAF Technical Committee on uh, exchange of information. And our country therefore made a pledge to uh, implement the uh, EOI uh, on uh, request and as well as the automatic exchange of information based on a very clear roadmap. And several 
uh, initiatives aimed at communicating and awareness raising uh, made with the uh, Ministry of Finance, who has uh, promoted several initiatives with the parliament and the public authorities at the highest level. So that's what uh, was done on the political level in Togo. And also, uh, there was a delegation of the power uh, to the regulatory authority. And we've also set up a unit for the exchange of information with uh, the adequate resources. And uh, we've also uh, promoted constant monitoring and made sure that there was a harmonious implementation of the standards so that we would be prepared for the peer reviews. From the uh, lawmaking standpoint, Togo has uh, changed its uh, tax regulations so as to uh, factor in uh, the uh, tax transparency requirements that are uh, the um, actual access to information. And when it comes to uh, the uh, beneficial ownership, we've worked a lot on this aspect. And this was in, introduced on the uh, 2021 new uh, finance law. And so then we've uh, signed a, a law on uh, the financial uh, Processing a new criminal code and other uh, texts applicable to the extractive sector are all converging in the same direction. Uh, so that uh, we take into account uh, the actual uh, beneficial ownership. And the tax administration has integrated the procedure for exchange of information. And we've also automated the uh, statements as well as the payment. Uh, uh, so the interface between uh, the various uh, applications and that of the uh, tax administration, these interfaces have been developed so as to cooperate with the uh, company compliance registry uh, and the um, registry for commerce and trade and all this has helped us to achieve some uh, quite interesting result that i would like to uh, present very briefly so uh, the first result is that our tax tax regulations and procedures uh, have uh, been updated to better take into account the uh, need for tax transparency and exchange of information uh, we have uh, had some uh, 20 requests and we have uh, collected some 2 billion uh, CFA francs, that is 3.5 US dollars of, um, from this exchange of information. We've also trained our officers and we've uh, made our office of our brigade more operational, working on uh, the transfer uh, pricing and we've set up joint units of people. and. Uh, we also uh, constantly uh, exchange information between units. That is, we also work with the risk assessment uh, to, uh, teams, etc. And all this, he has meant huge efforts, but in spite of that, there are still huge challenges ahead. And what are the challenges, for instance? What are the challenges? There are many uh, such challenges. And throughout the process, we've realized how many uh, challenges there were on, from the political standpoint to start with. As other speakers have also said it this morning, we need to have some political buy-in 
And we are fortunate that uh, our Ministry uh, for Economy has been very uh, supportive in these initiatives. There is also the capacity building uh, that is training the officers of the tax administration. And also we need to uh, have uh, operational uh, frameworks that are secured and make sure that we have a proper organization to process the information uh, that is within the tax administration. And the next steps is that we are uh, considering introducing automatic exchange of information so as to broaden the uh, tax base and to better assess this. And this will help to recover some 200 billion uh, CFA uh, in the coming years. Now, with this in mind, of course, Togo will need uh, the support of ATAF, the technical support of ATAF and that of the uh, Global Forum and the uh, Africa Initiative when it comes to providing us with some assistance in uh, implementing all these uh, initiatives. As uh, Mrs. Sugden said it, there, are, there is also the very strong involvement of institutional partners. Uh, we have uh, enjoyed the support of the African Development Bank Group, and they have uh, strongly uh, backed up uh, our initiatives. When we uh, set up our office uh, we, uh, for the tax uh, collection and thanks to the African Development Bank, we've been able to set up a tax and customs information system that was robust enough, allowing for interconnections between our administrations. Mr. Tudier, thank you very much for this statement. Now, as the chairman of ATAF, and based on your experience as the Office de Gola de Rosette, you've uh, mentioned the strong political support that you have enjoyed, uh, thanks uh, uh, from, from the um, uh, Togo government. Now, based on your experience in Togo, how do you think other tax administration in other African jurisdiction could uh, enjoy more support from the government as uh, we've uh, discussed this morning? Well, at, at ATAF, uh, we have some 40 countries uh, that are uh, members and we also have uh, uh, some partners we work with and we think that we uh, the approach was to integrate all the government structures and departments uh, to fight illicit uh, financial flows. And this, this was done through an awareness readiness raising effort and toolkits on uh, exchange of information. So when ATAF and the various national administrations can perform this awareness raising work and demonstrate the impact on uh, that these initiatives have had in the pioneer countries, I think that this can help. And also ATAF has uh, gradually built up a broad network of partners with the tax administrations in the African continent, but also with uh, partners from other organizations. And when we work jointly with partners, uh, we could imagine some joint initiatives uh, between partners uh, so that it would have an influence on the uh, policy makers. Thank you very much, Mr. Chaudhry. I'm sorry I've interrupted you. 
as I said, it's worth noting that there are huge challenges uh, in our continent, as was said this morning, and also. Uh, there is a need to work jointly so that each and everyone will play his own role properly in this framework. And we also need to integrate the fact that there is a digitization of our economies and we need to um, face the challenge of uh, bitcoins of cryptocurrencies uh, for which we're still there will be huge challenges ahead for our national administrations Thank you very much, Mr. Chaudier, for your answers. I'm now turning to Mr. Leonce Ndikumana. Good morning, good afternoon, Mr. Ndikumana. Thank you. Thank you for having invited me. Tax evasion has been frequently pointed out as one key component of the illicit financial flows. The role of civil society uh, plays in influencing changes in the global and local tax debate is clearly recognized. ICRCT was initiated by a coalition of intergovernmental civil society and labor organizations, is therefore a melting point of ideas by these organizations. Now, today, what is it that African uh, continent can uh, draw from these uh, initiatives? Thank you very much. I will speak in English, if you don't mind. So, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me. And um, uh, I have to, again, remind uh, the audience that I'm a member of the Independent Commission on International Reform of, uh, uh, on, on Reform of International Corporate Taxation. But also, I'm a, I'm a researcher, and uh, I feel uh, relieved to see that the issue of illicit financial flows is now taking so much attention. I have been working with the, on this for decades uh, as, an, as an economist, as a development economist, but it's good to see that this issue is now at the center of the dialogue on development, on international cooperation, and on global security. Because for me, um, the, for Africa to have a chance to reach a sustainable development goals in a way that preserves its, in, its uh, economic and policy independence. There's a need to clamp down on illicit financial flows. There's a need to clamp down on tax evasion by, uh, and avoidance by, by corporate, uh, by multinational corporations. And this is why I'm, I'm so excited to, be, to see that this dialogue is taking place. I just want to remind people that uh, Africa is losing uh, over 50 billion uh, per year on average uh, through illicit financial flows, which is exactly the amount of money that they, they are receiving, uh, at least sub saharan Africa is receiving in, in the form of aid. So if we, if we think about boosting uh, development financing, the focus should shift, uh, should, should, should be broadened to include how do we reduce illicit financial flows and how do we get corporate corporations to pay their fair taxes? So, um, so again, it's a, it's a matter of development financing, but also it's a matter of global fairness. It's unfair that uh, countries in Africa, which are the hosts of these multinational corporations, which are providing the resources to make them richer, are not benefiting from those activities because the corporations are not paying their fair taxes. So uh, in terms of the current di dialogue, where uh, ICRIST, ICRIST would like to see the, uh, the attention focus is the need for Africa to speak with one voice on global taxation in, 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 in global negotiations. And it, it especially there's a need for the African Union to come together and, 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 co and uh, coordinate this discussion on tax matters with Africa as a group, as opposed to each individual countries uh, this, uh, negotiating on it on their own. And it's important for uh, all African countries to participate in norms, in norm uh, shaping processes. 
and because this would legitimize the outcome and of the negotiations and also for facilitate uh, implementation. So it's important for African countries to participate in the OECD inclusive framework, uh, but they need to make sure that the outcome are good for them too. Uh, because remember, most of the many times when, when it comes to international co uh, ne ne negotiations, the benefits really accrue to the, to the, to the bigger economies, to, to the more powerful economies. We need to see that changes. I uh, want to re again remind the, the importance of domestic resource mobilization, especially in the wake of the, well, it's not in the wake, it's still, it's still raging, the, the COVID and the global economic crisis. This has really uh, increased the constraints on governments as they try to, to help uh, the, the African economy to weather the, the, the storm. So this has reduced the policy space. So there's a need to really expand the policy space of African economies by increasing domestic resource mobilization. Again, I'm not saying they should not receive aid. I'm not saying they should not, should not, should not try to, to attract more uh, FDI, but everybody should remember, should know that the biggest source of development of, of financing for African governments is not aid, is not FDI, is not portfolio investment, it's domestic resources. So every effort has to be really focused on, on mobilizing domestic resources, which is why we are talking about the, the need to clamp down on, on corporate tax evasion because, because multinational co corporations have really taken advantage of multiple loop, uh, loopholes in, in global financial uh, systems and the global trading system to minimize their corporate tax liabilities by shifting profits towards uh, uh, secrecy jurisdictions or countries that have low tax, tax uh, 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 rates. So, uh, and the loser is typically the developing countries, which are the hosts of MEs but not the homes of MEs. In the sense they lose twice, in the sense that African countries are offering their natural resources for, to the MEs to exploit, and they don't get the, the tax revenues, and their capital is declining because the resources are exploited. They are, these are uh, exhaustible re resources. At least for developed countries, which also suffer from tax evasion, at least they are the homes of the, those MEs. So the capital is, the, flows back and the profits flows back flow back to developing developed countries so africa sees both its natural resources are being exploited but doesn't get the fair share of the taxes that are generated from from those from, from those resources so it's a critical it's a critical issue for african countries now um so uh, the, the the issue is that while i'm very pleased to see that the dialogue on tax uh, accountability, uh, uh, clamping down on these financial flows, money laundering and so on is advancing. And I, I applaud the OECD for uh, uh, championing the, the discussion on uh, exchange, uh, automatic exchange of information, country by country reporting. My concern, which I have raised many, many times, and it creates is really, really uh, strong on this, is that African countries, and I would say developing, developing countries uh, generally, have always been marginalized because those, those debates are monopolized by the big economies within the OECD, within the, the, the G7, even though the deliberations end up uh, uh, being um, binding for African economies, even African countries, even though they were not around the table when those discussions were, 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 were being uh, 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 organized. So I um, I'm applaud the effort to include African countries in the, in the dialogue, but it's important to understand that their, their <clears throat> capacity to, to, to gainfully participate in those dialogues is constrained by capacity, human capacity, technological capacity, and granted that political will is, is really increasing uh, on, the, on the African front, I want to see uh, more investment in in building the capacity of African governments and civil societies to gainfully participate in the dialogue on tax evasion and uh, bank, banking uh, regulation, uh, transparency in the banking system, transparency in the trade system, which I work on a lot. So again, uh, the, the, <clears throat> the effort has to be both on the global, on the global side 
to uh, have uh, uh, developed countries, which are the homes of these multinational institutions, uh, uh, multinational corporations, enforce their own laws about tax, about corruption or anti-corruption, so that they can actually discipline their multinational corporations. On the Africa side, I think African countries are doing a lot, but they need to do even more. I applaud uh, the African Union, which is really helping to, to coordinate the, the dialogue. I applaud the, Afri the, the UN Economic Commission, my former okay. employer, who, which, which, which is really doing a lot in coordinating the efforts on research and dialogue on illicit financial flows, but we need to do more. Every government in Africa needs to participate fully do their homework at home, but also get their voice heard at the continental level and at the international level. Thank you very much. Okay, merci beaucoup, Professor Ndikumana. Thank you very much, Professor. I have one last question uh, to which you should answer quickly. Now, in Africa, uh, young entrepreneurs uh, complain about the uh, tax pressure that they uh, undergo when they start uh, business. Uh, so do we think that uh, increasing tax transparency will actually lead to less pressure on those young entrepreneurs uh, and the African startups? Thank you very much. This is a very good question because we know, firstly, that for Africa to move forward, we have to develop the private sector. And when you say the private sector in Africa, you mean the small and medium-sized companies. And the problem, as you were saying, is that they complain that, there's, that the tax burden is too high. And one of the reasons why the tax burden is too high is that the governments cannot collect enough tax uh, from the big companies, from the multinational companies. So uh, the governments have to collect taxes. It's normal for companies to pay taxes, but you have to see that this has to be fair. Uh, here we have multinational companies that are exempted from tax when African companies do not benefit from a, a tax exemption. So this is something that is unfair. This is an uneven competition. So we have to have a, a, an equal uh, playing field. Uh, uh, and the uh, African entrepreneurs should not pay more than foreign entrepreneurs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ndikumana, for these answers. Uh, I now have a question for Mr. Edward Kieswetter, who is the Vice President of the Africa Initiative, who is also a Commissioner at the South African Revenue Service, the SARS. So good uh, morning, sir. Good yeah. afternoon. <laughs> So South Africa has been a member of the Global Forum since the beginning and has made, or since 2009, and has since then made significant efforts uh, to meet the international standards and build up its uh, EOI uh, framework, and it was uh, rated compliant uh, in 2012. South Africa has also been active in tax transparency activities, uh, uh, is a member of the Automatic Exchange of Information Peer Review Group, Vice Chair of the Africa Initiative. So this morning we talked about uh, political support uh, for the implementation of uh, tax transparency mechanisms, but in your opinion, what is the role to be played by the tax administrations uh, on the continent uh, in the implementation of uh, EOI to support uh, tax investigations and uh, uh, audits? Thank you. And, and again, thank you for an excellent report uh, that was uh, put together by um, the Global Forum, by the sterling leadership of Ms. Saida Manata. Um, I have to respect, uh, you know, people ask me how many vices I have. I have many vices, but I will confess to at least two. Uh, I am the vice chair to the Africa Initiative and I'm the vice chair to the Africa Tax Forum. So those are the only two vices I will admit to on this public forum. Um, I think what's important is we continue to remind ourselves of why we do the work we do. And I think sometimes we become so absorbed in the technical and important aspects of our work that we forget the why. Yesterday was Africa Day, and uh, one of the tweets I put out was, was to say that Africa is not poor, so why are Africans poor? And 
part of the reason is that of the significant mismanagement of the resources of Africa. And my, my wish is really that more Africans can share in the wealth of Africa more equitably. We have had to respond to the COVID challenge um, and all of the global consensus is that our debt to GDP ratios will deteriorate by between 10 and 15% because of COVID um, and that we will lose about $500 billion uh, in, in revenue, uh, which obviously then also means that our debt service costs uh, will increase, which means more of the hard earned tax revenue instead of buying food and feeding uh, those who are in poverty and building clinics and schools, we will be using that to service debt whilst incurring more debt. Uh, and our fiscal frameworks will lose integrity. So specifically to the question, the role of tax administrations, we are central to the financial and therefore emotional, physical and material well-being of every African. That's the why of our work. Um, the, the Development Bank, Africa Development Bank says that this year, another 50 million of our fellow citizens on Africa will drift into extreme poverty. Uh, and we do this in an, in, an, in an environment where expenditures increase and revenues will decrease. Um, and that will impact on, uh, on Africa for decades to come. Uh, and our generation, the generation on this call of tax administrators, we have the opportunity to significantly impact uh, on the generation of our children and our grandchildren. And all we have to choose is whether we want that impact to be positive or negative. The, the specific uh, role of revenue administrations, uh, 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 Monsieur Moderator, is that we impact directly the well being of Africans. And we do this by ensuring revenue sustainability and fiscal integrity of our countries. And if there is any ever an opportunity for us to work together, to collaborate, then it is through the exchange of information protocols uh, that we have all signed up to and increasingly have to sign up to. And it is by describing one of the roles we have is not just to pontificate this to our political principles, but to help them understand the cost benefit, the return on investment of this opportunity. If I came to you and I said to you that for somewhere between 500 and a billion euros, we can bring a return to Africa of close to 100 billion uh, euros, and that that would fund 50% of the sustainable development goals, why would you not invest in a project such as this. And it is our role to demonstrate that. Uh, um, and that's the importance of us to obtain political support, to ensure the legal frameworks are in place, to ensure that cross-border agreements are in place, to ensure internally within our organizations that exchange of information is integral to our, our strategic objectives. At, at our uh, um, humble institution, we have one strategic objective which says, we need to expand and increase the use of data so that it can improve our outcomes. And we see the benefit of that, but we also see it cannot, cannot be an add on to the work we do. It has to be integral into the story uh, of our strategic intent. Um, data management therefore is a clear objective. It must be embedded into our risk profiling and case selection work. Uh, we have let ourselves down in the past by only selecting cases of taxpayers who submit their returns, which means that the easiest way to stay off our radar is not to submit a return. And thankfully through, through protocols like the exchange of information, we can reach out beyond what taxpayers disclose and obtain valuable information um, that should be part of our risk profiling of every taxpayer, and particularly those who have the means to have offshore uh, financial assets. We have to build a human capability um, uh, as, as part of the strategic initiative to have the people, the policies and processes that can systematically uh, and systemically uh, uh, use this uh, information because we also run the risk, Madam Chair, of obtaining the information 
but they're not having the ability okay. to use it. Um, and so that's really the broad uh, response, but I thought I would contextualize it in reminding ourselves of the higher purpose of the work that we do. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kizvita. I have another question for you. You, you spoke of profiling such uh, taxpayers as may have uh, assets in certain places. What do you think of the work of journalists who have been revealing scandals such as the Panama Papers, the Swiss Leaks, uh, the, uh, all these... Uh, how important, in your view, is the work that the journalists are doing in this way at the international level? I think journalists play an extremely important part. They are the fourth estate. Um, and, and therefore, the role of journalists cannot be underplayed um, because they often shine the spotlight on areas where we who are regulators and administrators lag behind um, and uh, I, I'm often frustrated when a journalist gets to the scene of a crime before I do, but that's their work, and I value that work. Also, the, 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 the helpfulness of journalists is they have a lower bar uh, that they have to cross before they can allege culpability. Uh, the bar for revenue administrators and the bar for prosecuting authorities are slightly higher, and therefore the role of journalists is a leading indicator to areas of risks, and I cannot thank them enough uh, when they do that. Um, it is then up to us to follow in that slipstream um, and with greater sense of veracity uh, to confirm the information, but then to act on it. And we've let ourselves down, even in our own revenue authority, with uh, following up uh, aspects that was disclosed in, in areas of the, of the Panama Papers and other uh, similar uh, uh, um, revelations. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Kizveta. I'm very flattered by what you said because I'm a journalist. I'm an investigative journalist myself. So thank you. And I'm very grateful that you attach such importance to our work. Now I'm going to turn to Mr. Clément Manet. I wonder if you have a question, only one, please, because we have already gone over time. Is there a question from one of the participants that we could address to one of the panelists? There are no specific questions, Maxime. Perhaps we can simply uh, give the panelists uh, the, a chance to make their final intervention. Well, precisely. We're going to give the floor to Ms. Sugden, whose, whose last name I do my best to pronounce correctly. Could you, in, in just a few words, conclude? Thank you very much. You know, I, I, I think this panel was really excellent. And I just want to... Um, I think we've ended on a fantastic note. Uh, Mr. Kaisvetter really brought it home. You know, why are we doing this in the first place? It's about support, it's about addressing poverty on the continent and supporting its development. And this is also why the African Development Bank is very supportive of this initiative. And it's it's critical. And uh, and and I think the last uh, uh, speakers really highlighted this, you know, that, that we we cannot not uh, uh, put all our efforts into this. And the case is clear. Uh, the 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 cost benefit analysis shows that that the benefits clearly outweigh the the costs. So so with that, um, just to say that that we fully support this Africa initiative. We are really uh, happy um, with the partnerships we have with the Global Forum, with the AU, with ATAF, and also pleased to be supporting our client countries, our regional member states in in these endeavors. Uh, and again, thank you so much for, for associating us with this work. Thank you very much. I think it's important to remind the audience that you are the Chief Governance Officer, Governance and Public Financial Management Coordination Office of the African Development Bank Group. I'm now going to give the floor back to Erica Garrison from the European Commission, who is the uh, Director, the Director, to a general for international partnerships of the European Commission. Maxime, est-ce que je puis... Thank you very Please much, uh, Madame Garrison. Uh, I had to leave, so uh, in all uh, brevity, yeah, um, we uh, are fully committed 
committed to both the tax transparency agenda um, on the one hand as a political actor, but also as a development partner. And indeed, we see it very much uh, in the context of the larger uh, debate of mobilizing domestic resources and uh, fi finding finances uh, for development. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, uh, uh, à vous. Thank you very much. And I'm now going to give the floor to Ms. Shanae Mukumba from Tax Justice Network Africa. Do you have a few words by way of a conclusion? Yeah, thank you so much, Maxime. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to sit on a panel, I think, where there's so much consensus uh, about the importance of this topic um, and the benefits that um, essentially lie for, for Africa and the African continent. Um, I, I, think, I think there's not really much to add, but to say, you know, we, we, we all continue to see the extent to which we can promote increased tax transparency. I think all of the different stakeholders that are part of this conversation um, have a very key role to play. Um, and I think, you know, we, we continue to, to make this effort. Um, in, in the hopes, um, and I think it was um, the, our colleague from SARS who indicated that we're trying to leave a, a better future for, for you know, the generations that follow. Merci beaucoup, Madame Mukumba. Thank you very much, Madam Mukumba. I am the Tax Justice Network Africa. Mr. Philip Chodier, Commissioner General and ATAF Chairperson, a few last words. Thank you to all panelists and thank you for their very relevant input. I just wanted to make a plea and call upon our African friends so that they uh, join this very important initiative as we've uh, demonstrated earlier, the output, the results are very promising and we cannot afford to uh, leave these uh, resources, uh, leave our continent. <clears throat> Otherwise, we will not be able to meet our future challenges. And in solidarity, we should uh, commit ourselves to work together at various levels with various partnerships. Africa Initiative is really an efficient tool to meet our ambitions. So I'm calling upon everybody to uh, join us. And thank you again. Uh, to the forum, the secretariat, and all those who've uh, contributed to achieve uh, these results. And I uh, also would like to express our gratitude to our partners and to the partnership between uh, the Global Forum and out of for the sake of our tax administration. Thank you to all of you also, and thank you to all the uh, speakers and to all the attendees worldwide. Thank you, Mr. Chodier Leonce Ndikumana. Some concluding words? Yes, uh, thank you very much. I have had three, three uh, words to share with the, with the audience before we, before we close. One is the importance of taking advantage okay, of it, Marcel, vous plaît. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> taking advantage of the, the opening within the US government, which is now very committed to tax uh, fairness and international cooperation. The, 20, tw the 21 at, uh, minimum tax rate, uh, rate proposed by, by President Biden is a good start, but we need to do more. Second, I, I, I really want to underscore the importance of the coordination multilateralism in the, this, this process and they applaud the work of my former employers, the African Development Bank, the UNECA, and also the African Union uh, to really help African countries have their voice heard in the international uh, uh, forum. I also want to, to encourage African countries to really learn lessons from each other. We, we have the commissioner for, for, for SARS here in South Africa. And I think many countries can learn about what African, South Africa has done to really beef up their, their tax systems. If you look at the tax, the tax to GDP ratio, it's really, really good. But so we have to, I talked about capacity building, but actually even Afri among Africans, we can, we can help each other build our own capacity. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Uh, <clears throat> merci beaucoup à vous, professeur. Thank you. Uh, Leoncin Kumana, and I'm going to give the floor to Edward Kisveta, 
And of course, if you have a word for journalists, don't hesitate, Mr. Kisbeta. <laughs> uh, my only qualification of everything I say is for journalists to remain fiercely independent and not sign up to any ideological constituency. That's the value of their real work. They should report the news, not be the news. Um, I would like to, to leave my colleagues who may still be um, sitting somehow on the fence that um, the success we have seen in this work um, is significant. From South Africa's perspective, we have had information exchanges with almost um, 90 countries, and this year we will increase that to well over 100 countries. We have received um, almost 1.4 million reportable records that gave us sight of um, more than 26 and a half billion euros uh, from the first exchange of information. That triggered, we then created a special voluntary disclosure program, and that triggered 3,000 applications, uh, resulting in um, over 300 uh, million. Uh, 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 of additional uh, euro, of additional revenue. Just last year, um, through our voluntary disclosure program, we processed 1,800 applications, uh, which also yielded over 200 million euro additional tax revenue. Uh, this year, we have created a special unit uh, for high wealth individuals. Uh, uh, we broke it out of our large and international business. And we have already, we've, we've, we've earmarked one and a half thousand wealthy taxpayers. We have already uh, identified and sent, um, identified uh, an additional 230 billion of offshore assets just linked to 275 uh, of these taxpayers. Um, and we have started writing letters to them uh, to request additional information, which may lead to further administrative action by us. And just triggering that, we have already had seven of them to come forward to apply for voluntary disclosure to regularize their affairs. And it's, it's a, a wheel that is gathering momentum and it's a virtuous wheel because just the fact that we start doing it is putting us out there and people now begin to know, we are still have a lot of work to do and we'll confess that openly, but just the fact that we are beginning to do this work is beginning to send out a message that when you are involved in tax crime and in illicit uh, financial flows, you do so at your own peril. And the last message is really to say, it is, you know, we have an African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And this is one area of work where we as our African brothers and sisters absolutely have to stand together and uh, improve. There, there's no benefit in having a flag and a national anthem if you don't have fiscal integrity. That's the ultimate goal of sovereignty. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Kisweta. Merci pour ce Thank you very much, Mr. Kisweta, for this African uh, proverb. If you want to go fast, uh, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go with others. I'd like to thank all of you, uh, panelists, dear panelists and dear uh, attendees and i'm sorry that we uh, we did not stick to the time that was allocated to recession but i think that the debate was very interesting i'd like to add a few words today we've heard a lot uh, we've heard a lot about uh, uh, illicit financial flow and uh, the critical impact they have on africa that we need to tackle um, IFFs in a resolute uh, fashion because they're a huge challenge for the continent. We've also understood that tax transparency will be key for the recovery post uh, COVID-19. Now, why Africans are poor while Africa is rich? Indeed, it's true. Africa is often presented as a source of uh, mine, uh, wealth, uh, oil, gas, and uh, uh, uranium, etc., and also a, 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 a land or continent of uh, other natural resources such as plants like cotton and others. Now, the uh, tax uh, evasion is also an important resource we need to tap in to meet our future challenges while protecting ourselves from uh, 
excessive debt. And I'm now going to fall back to Mr. Umboru, really representative of the Africa Initiative for his uh, concluding words. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, <laughs> that Maxim. Is, that is all my French. And uh, <laughs> so let me, let me thank uh, so let me thank the, all the panelists for very, very insightful uh, uh, presentations. They have very well demonstrated the need for us to continue uh, making the best use of the Africa, uh, the exchange of information tools. They have highlighted indeed how we should be able to now convert the progress that has been made in the exchange of information into revenue for our economies. And uh, I believe the, the focus has specifically been on the, the development of capacity for the African continent to make use of the exchange of information as a tool for domestic uh, resource mobilization. I want to thank you, Masime, for a very well articulated uh, moderation of the session. Indeed, you have used your journalistic ORS for, to facilitate that uh, session, uh, session, and I want to thank you very much. As a way of recap, today we have had a very wonderful day, and indeed a very busy day. We started by, by having a presentation from Zaida presenting the the report on transparency uh, the, uh, in Africa report, which was very rich in highlighting the progress made so far. We are able to see where we have come from and even to define the challenges that we need to deal with in terms of uh, where we are going. And that report indeed has been uh, very, very uh, engaging throughout this, the, this particular meeting. We also looked at uh, presenting we also looked at uh, the, the question of making tax transparency a priority for Africa. And we had a panel that went deeper into that, it, into, into that session, talking about the political uh, buy-in and the, uh, many other aspects of making tax transparency in Africa a priority. We have also looked at then realizing, making the, uh, uh, realizing or making using the tax the progress made to, 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 to convert it into revenue. And that session has also been very engaging. A few uh, take homes from that, that we must sustain the political buy-in for, for our tax jurisdictions in terms of a way forward. Also, we must continue in enhancing capacity for tax administrations. We must continue encouraging and supporting the use of exchange of information by African countries, giving them the kind of support that they need. And we must ensure there is demonstrable outcomes from the tax transparency and exchange of information for, by, uh, for Africa. So having said that, I want to thank all the participants who have been in this session for holding on there and uh, even for the questions that they have raised, their participation in this session, thanking all the presenters and all the speakers for what for very ably presenting uh, uh, through the through the day and making this particular launch a success now today we will end it up there and hope to meet again tomorrow at the same time 11 100 hours and uh, to proceed with the next day of this particular meeting maybe zaida unless there is anything you would like to to pass through regarding tomorrow Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, tomorrow uh, meeting is uh, um, an internal meeting of uh, the Africa Initiative uh, uh, for the Africa Initiative members, and uh, we hope uh, to see uh, all of them uh, uh, together uh, uh, tomorrow. And uh, let me also uh, join you in thanking all the panelists, uh, uh, the speakers, the moderators, and uh, you and. Uh, uh, my team that has been behind uh, this uh, this event and uh, who has put together all this uh, the needed infrastructure. Thank you so much. 
Thank you very much, uh, Zaida, and thank you very much to all of you. We meet tomorrow as agreed. Thank you very much, and uh, have a, a, a good morning, a good afternoon, and a good evening. Thank you very much. Jumbo. Salama, <laughs> Edward. <laughs> Au revoir. Au revoir à tous. Bye, Danke and Totsins. <laughs>